Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bourbon Neophyte and tonight's stream. Glad to see that you people can make it. I hope everyone can hear me okay and see me okay. Had a little bit of last minute technical difficulties, but it happens. But I think I've got everything worked out because as far as I can tell, I can see myself. And from what everything is telling me, audio should be coming through also. Have no idea what happened. Just kind of got one of those little bumps and here we go. But if you can't hear me or see me, let me know. But I think we are doing just fine. Hey, thanks, Brian. Yep, perfect. That's what I want. If you can hear me way out there, then I know everybody else can hear me also. So hope everyone's doing good. Whiskey Wars, cheers, brother. Thanks for popping on. Glad to see you. Let's see. You know, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Nope. Good, good, good. Well, you guys probably saw my thumbnail, and some of you know that uh, I took a quick little trip uh, yesterday and went up, put my trailer in its spot, and um, getting things worked out for the year and just to, you know, get ready for the season. And I get this question a lot, and it's just funny how I come up with some of these different ideas for. Uh, the stream, and someone just happened to say to me up there again, and I'd get asked this question all the time, hey, what whiskeys do you bring to camp? Well, I don't know. I mean, I bring many different ones. It just depends on what I'm feeling, what I got. I have a little travel bag. I put them in there, four, five, six, and I towed them up. I leave some there, but, um, you know, uh, it's just a topic that comes up. And I thought, well, you know what? I know everyone, I know a lot of people, I don't just say everyone, but I know a lot of people that like to camp. Some people really rough it. You know, they put a tent and everything and put a backpack on and they hike out into the woods and they pitch a tent and do all this and that. Well, I'm not, you know, 15 anymore. I'm, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and I'm into a thing called glamping. I pull my tent behind my truck and park it in a spot that gives me the comforts that I have come accustomed to. So that being said, I glamp. I don't pitch a tent. I don't sleep on the ground anymore. I, When I want a cup of hot coffee, I go to the Keurig, I hit the button, out it comes. However, yes, I still do make cowboy coffee from time to time. Put a little percolator, yes, percolator, on the fire, let it do its thing and make some coffee. I have no problem with that. But like I said, I'm not camping on the ground. And when I want to be warm, I go over there and hit that button and that furnace fires up and I'm living large. Sugar Kitty, cheers, brother. Thanks for popping in. Scott saw that you were in there. Thanks for popping in. But I'm sure some of you have particular bourbons, particular uh, rye or scotch or maybe an Irish whiskey that you like to take. Heck, you might even, you know, take a case or so of beer. I, I don't know. It's whatever you like. But specifically, I'm going to talk about some different whiskeys that I like to take up with me whenever I go, because, you know, it just goes hand in hand. It's just one of those things. I, I just like to bring it up and I like to sit outside and just sip on a nice dram or so and go from there. But um, me, this is rough. Where I got my lounge chair sitting back and just listening to nature. So tonight I decided to pour myself a little drop and something I haven't had in a while. And I don't know why, but I just didn't grab it. But I grabbed my Bardstown Fusion Series 3 tonight and decided I'm going to have a pour or so of that as we uh, chat a little bit. And who knows what I will move on to throughout uh, this stream. So without further ado, let's get on it. If anybody wants to join in and just chat about some of their experiences and what they like you know, to bring when they go camping, feel free in the chat, feel free to go ahead and put, you know, what you like to take in there, if that's what you want to do. Um, 
That's no problem. What's Sugar Kitty got to say here? Yes, exactly, Sugar Kitty. I'm, I'm, I'm not against tent camping. I'm not. However, I'm not sleeping in a tent and sleeping on the ground, cot with a mattress, you know, things of that nature, uh, comfortable environment. Uh, yeah, I'm not digging a hole for any reason <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, I'm beyond that stage, beyond that stage. So, yes, I glamp. Doug, cheers, man. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not into that. Scott, when I roll in, boom, I, I'm ready to go. I just hit that button, detach it from the truck, put out the stabilizers, boom, We're, throw out the slides. I, I'm, I'm ready to roll. I mean, boom, set out the chairs, put the cooler out, bring out the glens, pour the whiskey, and we are set. So that being said, let's... Uh, change these layouts and just go into, let me add this right here. Hold on. That's not the layout I want. But like I said, I don't go camping. I'm into glamping. Hook it up. Unhook it. I am set. That's my style. That's what I do now. If you particularly love to camp in a tent five miles into the middle of nowhere, I'm all for it. However, I pretty much can take this anywhere I go, park it in the middle of nowhere. I live in Nevada, so there's a lot of nowhere to park it and be around nobody. However, when it's hot, I've got air conditioning. When it's cold, I got heat. But anyway, it's just what I like to do. Oh, Will, what's up, man? Cheers. Sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. I'm just into my spleel here. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, good point, Will. And the reason I want to say the good point is, is I'll get into that little bit on the proof thing because I'm that way too, particularly in a colder weather. But however, right now, I, I mean, it could be July. I'll drink obtainium light whiskey. I mean, I, I'm not a I'm not stuck on that. I might put a whiskey stone or two in there because the temperature outside is warm and it's warming up the drop I'm drinking. However, I'll pretty much drink the higher proofs anytime. But there is something said about a higher proof come October and November when you're in that camper and you're sitting outside, even on a crisp afternoon. It is wonderful. That is for sure. Hey, Big Vic, cheers. If you got time, bud, you know where the link is. Bourbon Rendezvous, cheers, brother. Oh, High West Campfire. Get into that too, because there's so many legs on this. There's so many places that you can go as far as what you take. So I'm not saying one is right or the other is wrong. No, it's what you like. These are just some of the things that I take with me and sometimes I leave it up there. Well, my dad will be up there. So I will leave a lot up there because he'll say, well, why are you taking it all home? Okay. So I, I leave it there for him and then he can have what he wants. But anyway, so I take, you know, I, I take quite a few things here and there. And you know what? You can do it. Bring up your stuff, bring up your chair. It's all good, Scott. That's what I'm saying. However you choose to do it is fine. But I'm more pampered now. Just I want to I want a nice mattress underneath me just like I got right here in this house. I'm not blowing it up. I am not unrolling it. Nothing like that. Just isn't going to happen. And actually, I should never say it isn't going to happen because I actually have a bedroll. I have sleeping bags. I have different things. <laughs> if such an occasion arises that something overcomes me and I feel the need to rough it, which hasn't happened in 
30 years. So I think I'm good. Hold on here. I got I to gotta bring this guy on because I know when it comes to camping, he is an expert. Hold on. Here he is. <laughs> I think you may have given too much credit there, Anthony, but appreciate it. No, no, I, I know you're into camping. I know you're into camping. I know that you 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 bring your tent with you, you know, you you pack stuff in, you hunt, you fish, you pack it all out. Yeah, I'm done yeah. with it. I, I mean, so I, I appreciate both sides. I mean, so what you're doing is much more relaxing. What I'm doing is more like uh, you know, like uh, you know, naked and afraid style. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and only, yeah. only because I just like to test my skills occasionally. So twice a year we do that. Um, uh, but I mean, even still, we're still pretty relaxed. It's not like, I mean, it, there, there's, it's a full camp with a bunch of guys and we got grills and fire pits and tents, you know, set up for cooking. And oh, so yeah. we can, we Absolutely. can, cook, you know, so, you know, we got propane and so it's not like I'm oh, actually yeah. roughing it, but, um, but still, you know, we still like to try and do things as archaic as possible, just to just to see if you know we got what you still takes. got it. Yeah. Hey, look, I'll give you a couple of sticks. You can rub them together and make a fire all you want. <laughs> but even when I was in Scouts, I carried a little bottle, and inside that bottle was either some lighter fluid or some kerosene. And when people weren't looking, I just gave that thing a little bit of a squirt, took my bic lighter, and pow! <laughs> oh yeah, man. I, unless I was forced to do it like a caveman, I said, This is the 1980s. <laughs> I am not having to rub sticks together. I do not need that mare badge. I got it already. Well, you know, one of my favorite things to backpack in is just uh cotton balls uh soaked in Vaseline. Man, those things, if you if you got a good fire stick, those things will light real quick and you're you're all set. I That's just that. grabbed Dryer lint. There you go. Yeah. That... Battery with very fine grit uh, steel, steel, steel wool. wool. Yeah. And just pull off a piece, touch that nine volt battery to the steel wool, and boom. You are good to go. I didn't care if it was raining or whatever. That steel wool and battery worked. Yeah, man. It didn't care about water. Trust me. No, you know, electricity doesn't. <laughs> hey, cool runnings. Cheers. Glad you can make it, man. Great and cheers, to cheers to everybody in chat. Got a lot of great people here. So cheers. Oh, absolutely. You. Absolutely. Let's see. My first thought was smoke wagon, but maybe not if you're in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. And you might see behind me that there's my smoke wagon. And yes, that's one of the things that, you know, I I take too, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Oh, I, well, I'm telling you what, the reason why we went up there was just to see how things fared over the winter, because where I store it, it snows, it's below freezing and, you know, da, 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 da. But I can't beat the price that they charge me to store it. basically a buck a day. So 30 bucks a month. I, I will not find that down here where I live. Down here where I live, you're talking 150 to 200 bucks. For oh, a piece yeah. Of flat pavement. Yeah. Just I mean, I, I don't exactly live in a metropolis in most places around here. It's more like double that, like 60, because a lot of people will store their boats and trailers down here because it, Lake Cumberland's a pretty big destination spot. So, mm -hmm. well, like I said, just got lucky. So that's that's just that's just where I I keep it. That is for sure. OK, hey, cheers, Adam. Nice to see it. Thanks for making it. Oh, Commandant Lou, Wild Turkey 101. There is nothing like it. And we'll get into that when I get through some of these slides. Let me just run through chat here real quick to make sure that I don't miss uh, anybody because I don't want to slight people. Right, Sean? That's, That's it. Right. Man. I got I to gotta bring another uh, camping guru on besides Adam. Adam is a camping guru. He's actually streamed one time when he was out camping, we weren't sure what he was doing, but there was a lot of fence and cows, but we didn't want to go there. Okay. That's for sure. That's for sure. Here's the other one. What's up, Brian? There you Here's go. Me, man. Let me just raise that glass to you, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Brian. How we doing, buddy? I'm drinking what I take camping. Evan Williams, bottle and bond. 
you know, so so far there you go. So there's there's three three bottles sitting on my table. I won't reveal them until we get into that, Anthony. Until we That's get into right. we take camping. But so far, people have mentioned two of the three I got sitting in front of me. Exactly. <laughs> and wait till you see. Wait till you see. I'm, I didn't get through the slides yet or anything like that, but we will. Oops. You're lucky enough to have access to a cabin in Colorado. Dude, that's like my dream, to have a cabin somewhere where I can pull that trailer, just leave it there, go into the cabin, just like I would walk into my house and do whatever I want to do for a day, a week, whatever, Basically, refresh, recharge, do what I got to do, figure out where I'm going to go, hook up to the camper, and go. That's just my thing. Uh, that's just what I want to do. And uh, there you go. Evan Williams, bottom ball, always a winner. And especially at 15 bucks or less, depending upon where you are, you oh, yeah. can't go wrong with that price. I mean, but four-year-old, 100 proof, come on. <sighs> I mean... It has flavor, it has the proof, and it's a great drinker. That's, and like I said, we've talked about this before. So many people are focused on that $100 bottle or that $75 bottle or $200 bottle, and they will walk past that Evan Williams, and I just laugh and go, no problem, as I put one in the left hand and one in the right hand and walk up to the counter. <laughs> lay it out. I, no, no there is no shame. Right, Brian? Nope. <laughs> hey, my other my other camping one is uh, low shelf Evan uh, Henry McKenna, like the eighty proofer. Okay. Because yeah. that's that's Nothing the only that that's too. the only one I actually like. With I, I mix it with my iced tea and cherries and stuff. There you go. So it's yeah. the only one I actually drink ever on ice. Cheers, it's mixed, man. It's mixed with uh, iced tea and cherries and the juice from the jar. So, 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 Brian, you'll have to forgive my terrible memory. Where where are you located? Uh, in Virginia, about an hour south of D.C. Okay. So, Stone so what area are you, are you typically? Do you still go camping, or? Yeah, I've got a I've got a thirty foot uh, travel camper. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, we usually go to Outer Banks, um, mm -hmm. at least once, and then uh, different state parks around Virginia and. Uh, that's I haven't. We don't really go on big trips yet. That we're saving the big trip for when when we retire and we we live in it and go all over the country. <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. He sounds good. Oklahoma. Yeah, I I not, I started out in tents and then I got a pop up camper, and then we had to pop up for about a year. And after it rained every damn time, and you have to fold a wet pop up camper away. <laughs> and then come and set it up and dry it out. We went, yes, let's 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 upgrade on that. So I don't care exactly. if it rains, snows, whatever. I don't got to do nothing but tow it home. <laughs> yeah. Bingo. So Bingo. when, when, when we do point. our when we do our camping trip, it's like spring and fall. Um, usually, usually April and October is the two trips. Um, in any case, the dog is dropping toys down here. Um, <laughs> in any case. Um, Usually there's about a dozen guys, and usually it's just me and one or two other guys that are intense. Everybody else is doing it like you guys do it. You know, they got a trailer and, and they got AC, and they're uh, they're just as comfortable as they were at home. Excuse me. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to mute my mic here. But yeah, that's that's just me. But um, Barbara wanted to. You're right. Smoke wagon is always a hit, and I got a a story I'll get into. You know about that because how, like you said, you brought bought that. And the people saw that where you were and it was like, oh, can I try that? Can I try that? Can I try that? Whiskey attracts people, creates new friends, stories, and good time. Not because you're getting slammered, but, you know, it just brings people together. So does food in general, brings people together. So that's why camping and good food, I'd say good booze, but good booze, Where's your ball, buddy? good friends, it's, it's just it goes hand in hand. So I just decided because again, when I was up there, someone asked me about whiskey and it just clicked in my head. And I thought, this is something that we can go on about for a long time. And just, you know, what do you take? What do I take? What's good? Whatever. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. Hey, cheers, Marty. Great to see you, man. So, you know, I mentioned the Bardstown Fusion and 
yep, I generally will have some of that. Not every time, but I may take a bottle up there and smoke wagon. Uncut, unfiltered, small batch, straight bourbon. Yep, that's there. As a matter of fact, I took these bottles up when I was there um, just because it's just like a staple. Um, I didn't leave them because I want to get some more backups and then I will take them up there and leave them. I just wasn't sure if I was going to have any of them this week. And I was like, nah, yes, nah, I'm going to take them. No, I'm not going to take them. Yeah, I better bring them home. So I brought them home and then I ended up drinking Fusion anyway. But, you know, some of my go-to bottles are this and these always, for some reason, just are like an ant to a picnic. They just draw people. Oh, you got smoke wagon. And you can be from Oklahoma. Um, uh, what was the people? Montana. I almost said Minnesota. Montana, I've had people come. Oh, man, I've heard about that. You know, the, the hype is there. The word is out about smoke wagon. And they get to try it. And it's great. And one thing I like about all three expressions is depending upon the person that you have there, you can start them out on the straight bourbon because it's 94 proof. Go up to the small batch is 100 proof and then uncut, unfiltered. What is it? 116 proof, 57, 58, 56 ABV, somewhere in there without me pulling the bottle down and looking. So you can actually hit everybody from the beginner to somebody that has a more advanced palate and just loves that wonderful finish on there that just grabs that tongue i mean it is really really good in my opinion and you just yeah you just can't go wrong um with those but the bardstown have always been one of my favorites and between the fusion series and the discovery series um it's just like a no brainer. I'll always throw generally one of those in there. You know, the smoke wagon is gone. Um, and we go from there and who knows? I mean, yes, you always see Jack Daniels and Jim Bean come out over there, but I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying that they're good or whatever. They have their place. But personally for me, the standard expressions anymore uh, are good for mixers. If you mix and I've gotten away from the mixing, um, Brian, he'll take the, the lower proof McKenna and takes it with him and he mixes it and stuff. But again, that's fine. But See, I they, uh, drink that lower proof McKenna neat because I think it's good. It still has flavor. Oh, I do it's that still, too. Yeah. I do it's both. Still a decent, it's still a decent sipper. And I just haven't found it in a long time. And it definitely wasn't in this state. I picked it up. Might have been Arizona, but I can't remember. And I don't think hanging AZ is in there. But if he is and hears it, he'll, he'll put in there. But anyway, um, great things to have up there. But what I have to be concerned with from time to time is how warm it gets. I don't want it getting really warm here because that can affect the flavor of your whiskey. So when I store it, I store it low and in a cabinet somewhere that it's cooler than the rest of the trailer and it generally is. So you just have to be aware of those of you that have a trailer know what I'm talking about. You just oh, don't yeah. leave it out. And sometimes I just take them and put them in the refrigerator. So yeah, they're nice and cold when I get them, but that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. When I say cold, they're not frozen, but they're cool. Yeah. So yeah. I don't worry about anything happen as far as, as uh, that goes in there. You know, it's just, it's just the way I like it. Say so what we got here, Cheers, Mario. You found Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C920 at a hundred bucks. Woo. Did you pick it up? Z-Man? You know, I probably would. A C920 is one of the better ones, but yeah. that's at the point for me that I would go, whew, because it's generally 70 bucks. So 30 bucks more for something that's just not there. Again, it's your money. Everybody has that point of what they're willing to spend on something. Uh, I've seen I the I, C918, I think it was, once in a while, but they they want a couple of hundred bucks for them. And I go, they're crazy. 
Yeah, I know mean, those bottles that are a couple of years old, those are getting harder and harder to find. So I'd probably do it. Hopefully, if you draw in people at this bourbon, there, there is also bringing bourbon. Yeah. Well, as that's what I'm saying. You always will find Jack Daniels and Jim Beam. They just seem to be everywhere. And they have brought them over. I don't turn it down. I won't grab it because I have mine. But if somebody comes over, hey, I want some, I, hey, you drink what you want. I, I don't care, even if it's Long Branch. If that's what you got and that's what you drink, you go right ahead. I don't have a problem with it. I want to make sure that gets out there. Long, sure. Long Branch or, or Woodenville, right? Yeah, that's, yeah that's exactly. A big brand, you know? I like Woodenville, just not the 90. <laughs> just not the 90. Uh McKenna, 10 at 70 bucks in AZ. Wow. We're about 50 here still. I've seen it as high as 100 in some places here in Nevada. And it's like, yeah, they're they're just ridiculous. That's for sure. Yeah, it's running about 40 here pretty regularly. I don't know. If okay. So you did get, and I don't think that's a bad price for that one because that is a better one. Matter of fact, I like the uh, C921. So... Oh. I picked up two more bottles here over the last few months just to have a backup for the backup. And then somebody may want one and we work out a trade or something like that at, at some point in time. But that just to me seemed to be the year that I really liked on that. Okay. I uh, missed one of those Jim beams at 108. Yes. Top dog. They are good. I have, had that. I um, have an older single barrel, but it's only, I want to say 95 proof, which wasn't bad. The 95 is what kicked it for me, in other words, which made it to where I, okay, this is good. And my dad really liked it. So I have one here on the shelf and that will go up and stay because he liked it. And, um, I'll leave that there. So that is a good one. And I actually saw it. Someone picked it up and I asked, hey, do you have another one? They said, no, but we'll be getting more in. We know because we just got it confirmed, but it's just not here yet. So I'm like, I'm probably going to pick one of those up because people say that's a good drinker at the price. And I want to say they're 38 bucks, 40 bucks. Don't, uh, don't quote me, but it's right around there. Not a bad price for 108 proof. I, I'm i not sure what the age, I mean, it's not age dated, but um, I don't know quite how old that juice is that's in there. But at any rate, I've had the one at 95. So if the one at 95 I thought was decent, 108 has got to be a little better. So I would, I'd throw out 40 bucks on that just to, just to try, especially at, at that proof. I wouldn't have a problem with that whatsoever. So yeah, something else uh, that I might go ahead, pop go ahead, up yeah. on there is I like Irish whiskey. And I did that um, conviction for the Egan's 10. And then, of course, everybody knows I do like scotch, and particularly peated scotch. So the Lagavulin, either be it the 8, the 9, the 11, the Lion's Fire, or the 16, who knows? I would definitely... Uh, have no problem in bringing um, something like that up. As a matter of fact, when I was up there, I had, what did I, what did I pop up? Oh, I brought up my classic Lottie. I had that up. Matter of fact, I was drinking that when we were on your 750 stream. I was started off on that. And then um, I had the High West Rendezvous Rye, which was kind of odd because it left, I want to say, it wasn't bad, but going from the scotch over to that rye was a little funky taste. And I'm, yeah, I can see that. The third sip, yeah, it was, it was perfect. You know, it was just that transition you got to get through, get that off your palate, get the new stuff in, and then let it keep rolling. And that was good. But you know, bourbon, Irish, scotch, yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue. Uh, with those. I would definitely have one of those. Go ahead, Sean. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no. No, I, I was just going to, on that, uh, the barrel proof Jim Beam there, um, 
to me, that's like right where Jim Beam really starts to get interesting. I'm talking about the Jim Beam line itself, not the other stuff that's under the Jim Beam umbrella. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so th I, I do like that bottle. Uh, around here, it's about 30 to 35. So um, yeah, it's decent. Not too bad. Worth a pickup. It is at that price. If like I said, if it's forty bucks or under, you can't go wrong. One hundred and eight proof. It's a solid bourbon. What I mean by that is, is it's consistent. If you like yeah. that profile, you like that. It's going to be consistent. When they came out with that at a, at north of a hundred, that appealed to me because I like things at you know a hundred proof or more. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's just good. And so I will throw out 40 bucks and pick up a bottle of that because it's right I think, where I would like it to be and try it. And if it's good, it's good. Yeah, That's that's the bottom line. I, I think what hurts it for me is that they, you know, Jim Beam's also offering Old Granddad 114 at similar price point and also Knob Creek 9 at similar price point. So I tend to lean towards those two more. But, uh, yeah, Jim Beam 108 is not bad, though. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I've only no, had no. one bottle. And uh, I got home, tasted it, went back to the store, and was able to get another bottle from the same barrel. Oh, and, uh, I haven't. Go. That was two years ago, and I haven't opened the other bottle because I'm like, I liked it so much that I'm just, like, <laughs> sitting it up there and waiting because, like, that's the only thing I'll not open is stuff I've already had like that. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that... And exactly. They, it, they were thirty-five bucks. Now they're forty-one here. So, yeah. I was just looking at my fusion series, and I said, "Oh my gosh, where's my, where's two? Well, I forgot. I drank one, so I have the backup, but I didn't open the backup. So I didn't finish all of three, and I have a backup for three, and I've got four, and I've got five, and the backups are there. It's just I was like, what happened to two? I forgot. I killed that bottle a while ago. <laughs> but I just haven't opened the other one because I knew I liked it. It's good." Yeah, and uh, the the how do I want to say the 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 need to to experience it? I'm good. Maybe next week, next month, next year, I'll crack it again. I, yep. You know, I, that's why I, if I like it, like you, I got to run back and get another one. Or yep. if I was at your place and got to try it, and I go, oh yeah, that's good, and I had more than one glass. So if I saw it out here, yep, I'm buying two, one to yep. enjoy now. You know, get it out of my system. Now I got a backup. Yep. And that's just how I am. You know, if I like it, uh, I got to go get that backup because I really won't. How do I say this? I really won't enjoy that bottle if I know I can't get it or another one. I'll enjoy the dram. But I'll be hesitant to go for it, even though I hear it calling me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll grab something else that I haven't been to in a while to save yep. that. Yeah, that's my oh. my my rip ten and my lot B twelve. They're in the cabinet behind a whole bunch of stuff because that's right. They, you they're have disappeared. to have an effort yeah, to get yeah, to it. Yeah, they they got to go slow. Mm hmm. Because I ain't getting another one of those. <laughs> well, not at retail. Sure. So should you open one? Let me think about that for a second. Yes, yes. The C nine twenty. Yes, the C nine twenty. Absolutely, you should. As a matter of fact, I don't think I have any more of that. Now I'm going to have to look after the stream because I've got all the 921 or the uh, C9. I got the C. Uh, let me think. I got the C. I got the, I got the, now I'm really thinking now. I know I've got the, <laughs> I, I've got the 521. I've got the 921. Do I have the, the first one? Ooh. Yeah. The, the, B520, the B521. That's the only one I have. I, I guess I got and on that. I, I picked that up. I picked that up in Maryland, not even here. And I paid like 89 for it. <laughs> He's making me think now. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Am I out of that? I don't know. Because I haven't went. It's on this side. It's it's to the back. So it's not something I'm reaching for all the time. I might only have one left. Anyway. <laughs> so Brian, me think now. Brian, actually, that the the B five two one was actually my favorite last year. A lot of people like the C better, but I, I really like yeah. it. Um, oh, I, it, I liked it. I love it's 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 good. Um, but it's Z man. So, uh, man, look at that. Sure, kid, you got two C nine twenties put away. 
I, I'm going to have to hit you up for some samples or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, about, I don't know, a couple months back, me and Charles, we did like a blind flight of ECBPs and C921 uh, against all of last year's. And what else did we have in there? We had one other random one. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, C921. So that was our favorite for me and Charles both. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a good bottle. Sure. So definitely. So there are some people that no matter what, they're going to be on this stream no matter what they have to do. And there he is. You see him right there? Big he Vic. said he'd be What's here. Up, Vic? He said he'd be here. And look at him. There he is. Well, he was probably getting some camping whiskey, as a matter of fact. No, I'm actually on my way to a duck game. I forgot I had a game today. Oh. <laughs> so I got, got the little man in the back. And there you go. I there said I need to stop go, by brother. and say cheers to y'all. See, you never get away from driving, do you, Vic? Uh, every day. <laughs> every day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you guys don't know, I think everyone in here is familiar with Big Vic and his Big Vic's Backyard BS. If you don't know and haven't subscribed, look him up. Make sure you guys go over there and pop a sub to him over there. But uh, great place to go and just BS, literally. Guarantee. Uh, it's always a good I wanna, time. Uh, I want to apologize to everybody. I, I canceled my stream because Ben was going on and he hasn't been on for a while. So I said, you know what, just just run your stream. And uh, I had to work yesterday too, so I was a little bit tired. Hey, yeah. Work gets in the way of me attending a lot of people's streams because I don't get home until after a lot of people are done. And um, that's just how it goes, you know. It, it's just how it is. Sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you can't. But hey, you know, we show up yeah. where we can, when we can. That's for sure. That's it. Looks yeah. like, Rick Key says, looks like he's working. Big Vic's always working. <laughs> what, what do you do? What do you do for work, Vic? I'm a truck driver. Okay. That, that's what I was guessing, but I didn't, I didn't want to. So my, my uncle was a truck driver for like, let's see, 40, 46 years, a long time. I mean, he did it his whole life, basically, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think I'm 12 years in it. Yeah. Thanks, oh, for, yeah, thanks we, for putting up the link, Sugar Kitty, to Big Vic's channel. We, we need we need you guys right now. Well, we're, we're short on truck drivers everywhere, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of big companies that don't want to pay, so that's why they're short-handed. You know? Yeah, and, and I mean, like, a lot of people don't know, but our industry worked through the whole pandemic thing, and a lot of guys they took a hit on that. Like a lot of people in my previous company they were hit, and I even lost a couple friends. But it's like you got to keep rolling no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt. So, Vic, when you go camping, what's something that you like to take with you as far as a, a, a whiskey or a, a, a scotch or, or what when you go that you like to sit around the campfire and, you know, share with everybody? See, my go-to would be that that uh, my my initial chug bottle, that special, uh, special reserve, because you don't... You, you're not that high proof that you, you're going to do some weird shit out <laughs> Exactly. And um, that's why I was even said why I like to pick the, the smoke wagon line, because you can start out with somebody at 94 proof and then work your way up to, you know, 116, 118 proof for the people that um, right. that can take it, you know, that have a more developed palate. And... Um, I, I just like that. Of course, I'm a fan of the higher rye in the mash bill at 36%. I just like Leave that it. cinnamon. I like that, Leave that it. caramel and stuff that you get in there. It, it's it's just, I just like that profile. I mean, not because it's, it's here in, in Vegas, but it's just real good. And everybody, if you're not subscribed to Whiskey Wars, Sugar Kitty had already put it up. Make sure that uh, anybody that's in here who's new hasn't seen Sean go over there, look at his channel, hit that sub, and 
click on that bell so that you get um, notified when he's on. He just did his 750th sub stream yesterday, and uh, it was a great time. If I wasn't up at camp and had a little better signal, I'd have liked to have stayed, but also the dog decided that, <laughs> hey, it's time. So I had to go and take her out, but that's how that goes when you're at camp. You just can't open the back door to the yard and say, go. Well, thank you, Anthony, for popping on last night, and thank you for that chat. I appreciate both. Yeah, we, we had a good time last night, though. so thank you. I know I know, I know you were weren't even sure you could make it, so I appreciate you just making it for the time you did. That was, that was awesome. It's tough sometimes up there. I know it's funny, but um, sometimes I got great internet through the phone, making it a hot spot. Other times, nope. The only thing I can do is watch and, and, and chat. And that's right, Sugar Kitty, don't forget – after this, tonight is 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 live wire. So it's seven o'clock. Like um, once we're done here, pop on over, get over to live wire and see what's going on over there. I'm sure that uh, Mr. Stahl and Mr. Schitz have one heck of a stream plan. And I won't give any spoilers or anything like that. You have to see for yourself. All I know is that in the thumbnail, they're both wearing cowboy hats. So it's got to be a good stream. <laughs> we, we won't even go there. We won't go they're there. imitating you, bro. <laughs> that's what I was just going to say. I, I, I think they're they're liking what Whiskey Wars does, you know. Hey, that's the imitation right. is the highest form of flattery. That's, that's right. I right. Appreciate that's right. Exactly right. So, yeah. Sean, what are what are your your bottles that you're holding back on? I know that a couple of them you already mentioned, but, you know. So uh, I like to just call them like the three kings. This is kind of how I started out in bourbon. I have these around all the time. So, of course, there's the always should be on everybody's shelf, the Wild Turkey 101. Got to have that uh, mm -hmm. when I bring to camp real often. And, of course, you know, I'm sharing a lot because there's, like I said, there's usually a dozen, between 12 and 15 guys every time we go out. Um, so the bottles go quick, you know. So I'm not bringing high dollar stuff, but that's all right. And then, of course, you got to have the Evan Williams bottle and bond. That's always a staple, uh, like Brian mentioned earlier. And then my other oh, yeah. favorite bring is the Old Forester 100 Proof. Uh, so I rotate those three. I usually like stuff. So I bring turkey in uh, spring, then I'll bring Evan in the fall, and then, you know, maybe. Next spring will be Old Forester, and I just kind of rotate them out. And, yeah, so th those are my three I always, always bring in. Sometimes I'll, I'll I'll splurge and take a little more high price uh, bottle, but those are those are ones I'm always going. For, so. so earlier in the stream and in the chat, um, if I'm not mistaken, I yeah I think it was Will Henderson. I will favor a little more higher proof into the fall just because for some reason that extra kick just seems perfect on a cooler afternoon or evening sitting by the fire. But like I said, I won't discriminate. I'll drink, you know, obtainium light whiskey in July. I don't have a problem with that. I might drop one or two stones in there just to bring the temperature of the whiskey down a little bit because if I'm outside, it's, it's just getting warm. But in general, yeah, I don't hold back on proof. But I will agree with Will when he said he'll have a little more of a tendency to go with the higher proof uh, different times of the year. And I'm paraphrasing on there without going all the way back and uh, and seeing what's up. Hey, Bourbon Bar. Cheers, brother. Glad you could make it. Thanks for popping on. But yeah, I just I, I just like it. But um, there's just something about sitting around at camp and sharing what you got. And one of the things I alluded to is, is like last year, there was a guy who works for the Department of Wildlife. And he's graduated once and he's back in college and working and believe it or not the state does not pay you that well and people that have worked for the state or work in any way know that it's not the best paying gig but generally it's steady work so that being said um we were talking one day and he was talking about jack daniels and jim beam or whatever and i said well you know you you, you just need to branch out and i forget what he mentioned and i want to say it was basil hayden's he said he splurged on 
And I kind of chuckled a little bit and I go, I thought you said you splurged and we're going to talk about a real bottle. So we went back and forth, just Jack John a little bit and I was just teasing him. And so I told him, I'll be up next week. I'm going to bring you some real whiskey. So besides the smoke wagon, the, the, um, the Bard's town, I brought up, um, some old tub I brought up just a hodgepodge of other things. So after about, you know, eight, nine, 10 pours, uh, you know, a little slammered, but it doesn't make you bad. <laughs> it doesn't make you bad. Um, right. <laughs> he was like, he said, this was the best time he's had in a long time, but he's never got to experience such a broad range of whiskeys ever. He says, the flavors were just so from one extreme to the other. And I go, that's the beauty of this thing. Bourbon is bourbon, but it depends on who makes it. And I said, all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. And you have to remember that. So I got to let him taste it. And then he he's like, well, I can't find this old tub anywhere. So next time I was up, I, I brought him a model the old tub and i saw him this weekend because he's back now um working and he, he talked about it and i says i will make sure i get you some old tub because he can't find it where he was up in utah when he was going to school and um so now he's back down here and he's he's working and um it was just funny but you know it's something that he and I connected on, but he's always had a love for, but I never could afford some of the better ones. And so I brought them to him and let him experience some of the better ones. And just some brands that other than Jack Daniel, Jim Beam, Basil Hayden, um, I can't remember the other one they talked about. I mean, they're, they're popular, but the, the flavor profile and everything is just so darn narrow. Yeah, and when you get into the Fusion and Discovery series, um, it just, he was like, wow, that's that's unbelievable. Uh, I brought him the High West. I do remember that. I can't remember which one. Brought him up there. And he goes, you know, I like this. I like that. But I like this better. I like that better. And I go, everybody's like that. Everybody that's a whiskey drinker that has a collection, they're all pretty much good. But there are ones that they like way better than the others. And some, it's just like, Eh. I said, but that's the way it goes. So it was pretty interesting. I mean, it, it was it was it was a good time, and that's one of the things that he mentioned because I haven't seen him since last year. But he brought it up. And was, oh man, it was a great time. If he wants to do it again, I was like, all right. I says, I, I'm I can do it again as long as I've got months in between. <laughs> it's not like a few hours anymore. I need months. I need months in between stuff like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, y'all. I'm, I'm actually here. So I'll well, see good. You hey, right. cheers, brother. Cheers. I'll see you in a bit. Hey, Vic. Hey. <laughs> what does he say? It says, I love camping, but never did it much growing up. I plan on doing more in the future. Though. Hey, it's just a good time. I mean, it really is, especially when you got some people you know and you can just hang out and chat. And I yep. don't care if you actually are drinking alcohol. You can be drinking iced tea for all I care. It's yep. just sitting around that fire. It's just having that chat and just enjoying each other's company and nature that you're around. I mean, whether you're looking out over a lake or whether you're sitting somewhere under a canopy of trees or you're sitting somewhere in a field looking out at the stars at night or even just in the afternoon, enjoying the sun and just shooting the breeze. Oh, yeah. My it's best a sleep. relaxing good time. The best sleep I get when I'm in my camper. Hey. To the you point, know. it's it's parked in my driveway, and we've been known to just driveway camp. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, if and, I could uh, do that, that's where all my shakedowns would happen. Where oh, you could yeah. Plug it in, run things, hook the hose up, make sure yep. everything is working or whatever. I mean, I get up there, everything seems to be working. I plug it in and didn't have any power. I was still on battery power. 
took me it took me about an hour to figure out right. what it was when I figured out right. the cord was bad. The power oh. cord. Yeah. So I use an, I use another one. So the one from the trailer is fine, but I don't pull it out because I don't want it just sitting out in the elements. So I buy this 50 footer and I've had oh. it for 10 years. Yeah. Well, something went bad on it, but process of elimination, it took me a minute to figure it out from the fuses to this, to that. And like, this just doesn't make sense. And, but I was happy that it was just a cord. And so a guy there said, well, you know, you can cut the ends off and put new ends on. I says, you know what? After, you know, 10 plus years of literally being in the weather 24 seven. Yeah. Uh, chuck it. I'm just going to get another one. So I just ran the cord out from the trailer and plugged it right into the surge protector and boom, we're back in business. And I went, Phew. that was yours. 30 amp or 50 amp. This one is a 30. I wish I would have gotten a 50, but the information I was given at the time said that would all, that's what all I would need. And I've had nothing but problems because it's not 50 because it's almost 30 foot. Yeah. And the load on everything pops it. But if I plug into a 50 amp with my 30, yeah, I don't have that because you get another about an amp or two of available power. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yep. So on a 30 amp system, you might have 26 amps available. All right. If you go into a 50, that might give you another amp or two available. One leg, 124, I think is what the volts are on it. Anyway. I don't have that problem. So if I'm if the AC's running, the A the refrigerator and I turn on the microwave, I don't have that problem. But if it was gotcha. on the 30 amp, all that was running, I've got a 60 40 chance I'll blow a breaker. Yeah, I just I just turn the air conditioner off when I use the microwave. <laughs> but that's mm -hmm. only because of that. But when you plug into a 50 amp, you buy the adapter. Yep. I, oh, I have I have them just in case when I go places. Yep. All they have is a 50 the site available or whatever, yeah. Yep. Plug it in there. Car, get up here. Mm-hmm. So that's one way around it. I mean, it works. Like I said, it gives you a, just a little more oomph. You're never going to get more than 30 amps because that's all you are. However, yeah. you have that little higher availability to you, and I just don't have those issues. So... <sighs> anyway. And do you have an easy start on your air conditioner? No, it was before it. And I got to, I'd love to get one on, but um, I've also been looking at replacing it just because. Yeah, I don't have an easy start, but I'd like to get one so I can run the AC off my gener my little portable inverter generator I have. It's just, it's a capacitor that holds a little more of a charge. So you yeah. don't get that initial hit. Mm hmm Exactly. Yeah. So the smaller generators, let's say at 2000 watts or less can do it. Mine, my generator is 3200 with peak of like 37 or 38. So yeah, it fires it up. No problem. But I haven't used my generator in quite some time. And I have to, I was thinking about that today on the way home. Yeah. I use, I use, I have two 2000 watt inverters. And I used them when my power went out this winter in the, for the four days it went out in January. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so you I, guys I, needed it. I had one of them running the, the fireplace, electric fireplace in the TV console, and then the other one was running the refrigerator. <laughs> and it worked, didn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Solar is another big thing that I've looked into. And right now I have a little panel... Um, I'm going to say about the size of a 27 inch television okay. up on the roof, but it, I can take it off and put it on and I yeah. leave that on in the winter because it's not plugged in. Yeah. Maintains Batteries your battery. Yep. Yeah. Both of them are perfect. They're just old and need replaced because they're the original. Ah, uh, yeah. From six. Yeah. My, my battery is dead now sitting in the driveway, but it's plugged in. But my battery is 
five, I think the camper's five years old, so it's five years old. So, mm-hmm. and it was just you know the cheap piece of junk that came with it. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it lasted this long. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There, there's not a name brand on it that I can find. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's wait, you put you. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I think camping is good for everybody. You know, I grew oh, yeah. up camping, I was in Scouts, so you know, I, I went camping all the time, did all different types of camping. But you know, as I got older and we talk about it now, I mean I'm pulling mine behind me. Oh no! You know, yeah, the, the best summer of my life. I spent five weeks in a tent with the, because I was a parks and recreation major, so we I went. Uh, it was part of it was a semester in the woods basically. Mm-hmm. So I took classes, slept in the tent, and bounced around West Virginia and all kinds of different places. West doing, by God, Virginia. Yes. Doing different kind of backpacking trips, whitewater rafting, canoe camping trips, all kinds of stuff. Now I did a canoe trip down the Potomac. Okay. Yeah. I was it in the Mason Dixon Council. There's a, a camp there. I can't remember the name of it, um, and it was an adult getaway. So the kids stayed at camp, and so you had so many leaders stay at camp. And then I'd go, and another one go one day, and then the other ones would go the other day, just to break up the monotony of being stuck in a camp all week yeah. with kids. Yeah. And I did the Potomac on a canoe. Did a lot of portaging. In other words, had to pick that sucker up many times in the middle of that thing and walk. Yeah through the water because it just wasn't deep enough. Yeah. 25 years. Well, no, more than 25 years ago. A lot longer than that. Um, yeah. There's, there's some sections that, that get shallow. Oh, it gets real shallow. I was surprised. I mean, real shallow that you're in deep water and all of a sudden, yep. I mean, you hit it hard because <laughs> the current's moving. The current moves good. Yeah, but it's only that. (laughs) When you hit one of those shallow areas, man, then you're walking along. Thank goodness the water was clear. You could see where it falls right off. So you could prepare yourself. A couple people weren't paying attention because, you know, they're holding the canoe and, (laughs) oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I watched it happen. So I'm one of the people I can learn by watching others. (laughs) I don't have to experience it. That's that's better, Anthony. That's much better than learning from your own experience. Yes, yeah. <laughs> especially on a negative experience. It's always better to learn from somebody else's negative experience. Watch somebody else get hurt and then learn from that. I don't think I should yeah. do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I hiked the Appalachian Trail twice. Huh? Not the whole thing from end to end, but different parts throughout Pennsylvania. And uh, so I can say I did it. Got the T-shirt. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but it's a it's a tough hike in general. But when you have about twenty kids with you, and when oh, you start yeah. out, the line is one length, but after about three or four miles in, the line grows and grows and grows and grows. So you stage your people from the front to the middle to the back. So an adult in the front, one in the middle, and a couple to bring up the rear. It yep. makes for a long and arduous day. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I've always Let wanted me. to walk the section of it in Virginia. Like start at the, Virgin- the southern Virginia border and go to the north Virginia border. Look at Mr. Stahl. Look at this, man. So great to see the other half of live wire pop in there. Like I said, guys, you know they're getting ready for one heck of a stream. They may not know what they're going to do, but it'll be one heck of a stream. I guarantee it. <laughs> guarantee I know, I know it. one thing this week. This week, I'm pacing myself for the chug that's inevitable at Livewire. So, because I, I, I forgot that that was a thing and I was not ready last week, but this week, I'll be ready. <laughs> you can always turn it down. You don't have to do it. No, you, you, you have to. If, if somebody challenges no, you, you to a chug, you got to do it. Nah. <laughs> it's the rules. Hey, sugar well, cane. Not, I'm a rule breaker, people. so I don't always do it. <laughs> That's right. But not many people could say they've done it at all, Sugar Kitty. So just to say that you've actually hiked the Appalachian Trail at some point, whether it's a, a, yeah, a certain length of it or just like you said, the trail that's in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, that's a long haul over a period of time. But oh yeah, I can say I did it. I was there. I did it. 
stayed in the lean twos that they talk about now. And they tell you don't stay into it because of dysentery and other things, because you don't know the people that are around you unless the people that are in yours is um, they're in your group because some people just aren't hygienic. And it's hard to be when you're on that trail for two, three, four days or more. Yeah. That there's, there was a big problem for a while there with that people getting, you know, um, norovirus. I couldn't think of it. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> And right. they got then they and they had the rat problem with the hantavirus. Oh yeah, well that's always been there, but it wasn't as prevalent through the yeah. years as now. Hantavirus has always been there, but the problem is, is you get people as time goes by, people that are more dedicated. Let's just say like us three that are on the stream now, pick up after ourselves. We're very conscientious about what's there. Other people, as you know, when you get to some place, you look at it and go. Who left all this stuff here? And of course, you start picking things up because you leave it better than you found it because that's just what yep. you're doing. It's not right, you know? Yep. So you try to show others the right thing, particularly if you're with, like I was with a group of kids. And one thing we'd make them do is, no, see this stuff, pick it up. Well, it's not, I don't care if it's yours or not. You pick it up, leave it better than you found it. Sweep out these things and blah, 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 blah. Yep. And I, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's, it's a shame, but it happens. Yes, sir. Mr. Stahl, I, I, I do plan on being there. I might even change my hat, but don't get excited. And see those people are usually the weekend warriors, not the people long distance in it. Those yes. people have, those people have m much more care for the trail than, than, uh, especially if it's close to, you know, if it's close to a road where somebody can park and walk in and only go a hundred yards instead of having to actually work to get there. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've talked about this before, but we had a friend when I was a kid, but he was just disabled and we did a lot of camping in the winter. And one of the ones in particular, we went to a scout leader's cabin. We put him on a sled because, you know, you're oh, going to yeah. get his wheelchair and stuff through this yeah. snow because you're going through a farmer's field and believe me, it was waist deep. We put him stuff and put his stuff on the sled and we took turns just pulling it. Mm -hmm. And we laughed. He says, you know, if we let this go, that's a long way down there. <laughs> and he laughed too. And he says, yeah, it's a long way to pull me back up too. And then we laugh and go, you're right. So we'll hold on. <laughs> but he's a good guy. I know he's married and I think he has one kid or two kids now. I can't remember. I've slept since then, but I, but good guy. I mean, really a, a, a nice guy. Um, so a lot of good times, good memories. One of these, I know I've got a, an old photo album. You guys know what those are. Um, <laughs> and I have pictures about at that time, but I just can't remember where it is. And I was thinking about that last time I talked to go, Where is that thing? Where is that thing? When I don't want it, I can go right and grab it. But we've moved everything in this house since we had the flood last year inside here. And uh, so everything is moved. So when I have that recollection, well, I know it's not there anymore because that whole stuff was taken out. And now all those bookshelves got moved and then everything got rearranged on it. So that'd be I, I got to find that. I'd, I'd like to look at that thing. Yeah, that's part sure. of that that trip, that five week trip. Do you know Seneca Rocks in West Virginia? It's a Sounds big, familiar. It's a big rock. It's it's rock climbing. Okay. And so that, that was one of the classes we did was rock climbing and rappelling. Well, Slapshot don't like heights. So <laughs> that was not my best day of the trip, but I, I can say I did it. I I did it. Me too. And and that was it. And I'll never do it again. <laughs> so we went to our football stadium. And I don't know how they got approval of it, but you know, this was in the eighties, and so it wasn't as bad as it is now, but so the bleachers, I couldn't tell you how high up. I'm going to say three stories, maybe, give or take, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on the backside. But we got permission to practice our rappelling down the sides of that uh, at the stadium. So we would tie off, learn how to tie off on the bleachers because they were the benches. Yep. And we used two of them in case something happened to the one. You had the second one and throwing the lines over. Um getting into the harnesses. And then of course you had the guy on the rope down below you 
and then you just let them know belay on and you wait until you hear on belay and away yeah. you go. But it's standing up there and just allowing yourself to fall over the edge. It's yeah, when they told me that, I'm like, you, you want me to do what? <laughs> exactly. It's just not natural. Uh, and then I told my feet to do it and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> it. Exactly. That was the biggest thing with me. But then once I did it once and realized, oh, it's, you just kind of just teeter back. I mean, it's not. And then you walk down. Yeah, you're just you're walking sitting backwards, up. basically. Yeah, yeah. You, you're just walking right down. And then you get you get the hang of pushing off and letting your arm out and you slide down there, you know, and you put it back in and you stop like that. I mean, just like a break, you just bring that arm into you and you yeah. stop. Yeah. And then when you got to a certain point, it was just a safety thing, but they would tell you to let go and the person on the bottom would just drop taunt the line oh uh, yeah you stop yeah you stop right then and there but the thing about that is they tell you if it was a true emergency stop once you did it once the line goes to the trash yep yeah because it has been shocked it might work a hundred more times but once it has that shock you're done even yep. your harness the d rings the whole nine yards you can use it a thousand times as long as you don't do that initial shock load. But once you do that shock load, and that was before, I don't think any of the harnesses had the indicators that let you know. Oh, yeah, when it hit that, shock. Yeah, like on fall protection harnesses now, when you hook up a regular fall protection harness, if you were on a, a, a boom lift or something like that, uh -huh. there's indicators that will pop out and tell you, yeah, discard this because it's been shocked. Gotcha. Speaking of shock... You guys are going to be shocked when you see who's here. Oh, yeah. Real yeah. shock. Jim. Yeah. yeah. Anthony, Sean, Brian, how are you? How are you doing? How are you doing, man? Too bad. Thought I joined in the camping talk. <laughs> so, right. so, Mike, I saw that Mike says you have to wear a cool hat. for. I'll his do my best. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Like an Good. Commandant Lou, that, that's Wait, just what? the thing. People need to be considerate of everybody. You don't have to like the person or their opinion, just be considerate of it. And as adults, yeah, we can it. always just agree to disagree about things. But things that bring us all together, but besides the camping, the whiskey, good food, good times, good friends, that's, that's the premise, you know what I mean? You don't have to drink on this stream, you don't, have to be sitting there with that. I've seen Brian many times. You probably have had iced tea in your thermos or something like that. I have. Nobody right. knows it. <laughs> yeah. But the thing about that is, is it's not required. No, no. exactly. Yeah. I don't want anyone to ever think that they'd have to. And I could probably say that about Sean and period. No, you just want to come and chat. Come on. We don't care what's in your glass. There, There's nothing says that you know, you have to have food, period. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I always ask everybody what they're drinking, but, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you're drinking water, that's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm drinking bib and liquid IV because I had my hockey games today. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Well, you got to, you got to replenish. Oh, that's so good. I think I'm going to join you in some of that. Yeah, mm. and it was it was 85 degrees. It was off. Oof. That's too warm oh. for hockey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no yeah. kidding. Well, it was freezing where I was, literally. I wish. Now, is that of course, degrees? in two days, it's supposed to be like 57. I'm like, why couldn't we have that weather? Because they're actually talking about last year, the summer league, it about killed us all. And which, we were one supposed were, to get... which one did you have, Jim? I'm sorry, Brian. You're good. Lost Monarch. Lost Monarch. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were, we were, the... we've raised money through the – there's a minor league baseball team in my, in my town. And they let you run. They let organizations run the snack bar, and then you get a percentage of the the take mm -hmm. for for running the snack bar. So we got the money to buy get the lights, but of course now the Parks and Rec Department is bucking on the cost of actually installing it when they yeah, made the deal, when they made the deal that we'd get the lights. So they are, they were talking today that they're probably going to cancel the summer league just because last year we all about died. 
Now, mm. now, Brian, are you guys playing on a rink, or are you playing like outdoors on uh, inline skates? Uh, it's a uh, it's a rink, but it's on uh, inline skates. Okay. So I mean, it's got boards and you know all that stuff, and it's a uh, it's not pay it's it's a weird pavement. It's it's a special pavement that they designed for roller hockey, so it's it's hard and soft all at the same time kind of thing. It's yeah. it's a weird little surface. It doesn't it doesn't eat the wheels like concrete or asphalt oh, wood. Concrete tears it up. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they're talking about getting a new floor. There's like plastic tiles that they're talking about covering it with, hmm. which would actually be better because then because uh, right now the surface like. If you wear like hockey socks or whatever, it tears on, or the, even the roller hockey pants, it tears them up when you fall down. Yeah. So the plastic squares will simulate more like ice, so you'll slide when you fall. <clears throat> and you guys are and you guys are full pads and everything, just like a normal. Um, everything. I, most people wear everything but shoulder pads because it's, it's a no contact league. Okay. So shin guards, pants, elbow pads, gloves, hel helmets, helmet and gloves, and skates are the only thing that's required. But if you played without shin guards and pants and all that, you're you're not the brightest bulb. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't think there's anybody that doesn't. There, there's a couple. I wear shoulder pads sometimes when my shoulder is giving me issues. Mm -hmm. Just because on sure. roller hockey, roller hockey, you can't stop like on ice. It yeah. takes a little extra to, to stop. So sometimes there's some full on collisions, but nobody meant to do them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, or you run into Eric. the boards. Thanks for popping on, brother. So I don't know which one of you guys, I think, I know you do, Sean, but it's not close to you. I know you do, Brian. I don't think you do, Jim, but have a total line around. I've you. got, I, I've got uh, two that are close to me. I've got, a couple others okay. that I could get to if I felt like going a little further afield. Okay. I was not yeah, there I, today. That, I got total I wine, but here in Virginia, they don't sell liquor. They can only sell beer and wine. Oh, that's and bogus. Yeah. Oh, well. uh, I'm in lovely ABC control. That's right. Weird. That's only like the state can make the money off the liquor. That's what like, you even open in the store? <laughs> <laughs> but last year, ah. I found this there. This is good. Yeah, I've seen it. I haven't picked it up yet. Well, uh, well it's only ninety proof. Right. Okay. But this um, is made, and what made me think about it, this is made for them yeah. by these people. Uh -huh. I could be wrong, but I think that's basically the Emerald Giant with a different label. That's what I'm told, and this is batch one. So I went through well, two bottles. This is the second bottle. I've seen three or four on the shelf now. So if for some reason you find this and it's a batch one, and I'm sure two and three or four or five, whatever they're up to now, I think they're up to five, are as good. But if you find that batch number one in this at Total Wine, and you can get it between 32 and 35 bucks, 36 bucks, let's just say. Yeah. This is good. It's one of the 90 proofers that I'm pretty good with, and it's a rye. And um, so that is just uh, that's that's the MGP 95.5 rye with a little bit of Redwood Empire stuff in it, right? That's essentially what it is. I don't know. They are. Let me put it this way: this is a Total Wine brand. Okay. And I they went to Redwood Empire. So the story goes, and had that. Excuse me. Come up with this for them. That's interesting. So, I mean, so because Redwood Empire's Emerald Giant is sourced from MGP, as far as I know, isn't it? Uh, all, all their other stuff is. I'm not sure about that one. I, I've got a bottle. I just don't have it handy to look at it. it. It's, it's oh, right here. Hold on. Sure I'm just here. He knows the answer to this question. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hold on. I thought for sure that Emerald Giant was the 95.5 MGP stuff with some of. Uh, Redwood Empires. Here you go. I think you're distilled, right. The... Distilled ahead. in California and Indiana. Yeah. Bottled by Redwood Empire Distillers. Yep. Gaston, California. Because the... Uh, Garrison, the uh, sorry. So, yes, this does contain uh, uh, some MGP. Uh, uh, I think it's the Grizzly Beast is their bottle, the Bond Red. I think that's all their distillate. 
Oh, is it? Okay. I believe so. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I know yes. uh, I know Charles over at Phone with Whiskey. I know he got one of those bottles. I haven't tried it yet myself. It's not, mm. I actually I haven't even seen him out this way over in Kentucky. So I've 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 seen him. I haven't tried him yet. I, I can't I'm balking at the eighty dollar price for that that one in the in the rocket top. Yeah. I did grab this today. I would take this camping. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. We all said that. That was one of my choices, Jim. I mean, I got There's... the new bottle, but still, same same deal. Yeah, I yeah. grabbed this because it's the old bottle. And after exactly. uh, Stuff and Whiskey blinded it and came back and said, you know what? We like the old bottle better. I'm like, you know, the only the only, the only, the only version of this I've had is this. I have, So I should go grab a bottle because I liked this. It is You good. know, you know Jim, I, I wanted to do a blind of the two, but I can't find the old bottle now. All, all the old bottles are <laughs> bought up, so... <laughs> Woohoo, David. Cheers, brother. I also grabbed this today, and yeah, this is a one liter because I'm an idiot and wasn't paying attention. This is the 100 proof rye. Oh, the rye. Hey, that's a good one. I've been one, trying, to find, trying to find a 750, and they're non existent right now. And I saw this on the shelf at a store that blanked and went, oh, that's a 750. I should grab that. And then looked at it when I went, wait, that's a liter. You freaking idiot. <laughs> hey, it's just more rye. Yeah, that's a good yes. rye. I, I like that. Well, I don't know if I take take that camping. I, I haven't actually tried that. I've tried the single barrel barrel for fry because I got a sample from. Oh God, I think who sent me that sample? Shoot, I think it was Matt over at uh, uh, Whiskey Crusaders. And I picked up one other bottle today, but if you want to see what that is, you'll have to tune in to Live Wire Whiskey because that's when it's going to show up. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Wow. This, this I might take this, this in a bit. This turned out to be. This is a tasty little Oh, the wee beastie? Yeah, and I'm not even a big fan of this particular ride bag, but I could see taking it camping, maybe. Yeah. You know what? It's good, yeah. but the problem with that is um, it's just a little young. Once you've had the 10... Yeah, it's hard to go back. It's, mm -hmm. It is. But at 45 bucks for wee beastie... Yeah, the, you know, the wee beastie those... is the only one of those that I've had. You know, so, but I mean, like you were saying though, Anthony, so my thing is, so I can get the 10 for 50 or I can get the Wee Beastie for 45. So, yeah, it's, oh yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend the $5. To get exactly. The 10, so. Precisely. There's no point. <laughs> um, okay. So here we go. There is some of their distillate in ah. the three bases, but there is also a Haystack Needle, which is, all, which is all MGP and the two new bottles are on top and Okay, it's theirs. Okay, there you go. So I knew, I knew Sure Kitty would have the answer. I, yep. I, I did. I, I knew, even though he's lurking, when you mentioned Sugar Kitty and whiskey, his radar and ears just open right up. No matter what he's doing before, he he's like, give, give me, give me two minutes. Uh, I, I got your answer for you. Yeah, not even that. Yeah. He's already typing camping. with one hand as he's moving on to the other. Oh, I've got to get some more of that. I've only had tastes of it samples and i thought it was pretty good what is that the standard 90 right yeah this is this is the this is the select 93 out of the standard bottling this is actually a bottling a bottle from a couple of years ago and you can tell because they've since changed the color of this label it's now more of a, an off-white this is tan mm -hmm. and it, what i found with this is when you open it up the first you know three two or three three or four pours out of this they're not going to do much for you but if you give it and i've had this bottle for i think six months and six months in after having poured it, some of it and let it breathe it's much better it's actually mm -hmm. pretty good for what it is air air is an amazing thing yeah i got hey, one of those hey, last hey. summer and that same thing i, I found i drank the I, I picked it up when i went to north carolina because at the time they didn't sell it in virginia now they do but uh, I took it. I, well, I was I was at the KOA and I, I didn't take my camper. We just did one of the little cabins at the KOA. They're not too bad, huh, Brian? No, they're they're good. And I like doing that when we go to the beach because then the sand's not in my camper; it's in their building, and I go home without the sand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Anthony, I'm gonna hop off. I got to do a little bit of cooking before I get on live wire. So thank you go for ahead. having me. As always, appreciate it, brother. And uh, we will see you guys later. Cheers, all you dude. Great cheers, thanks for popping hey, on. We'll Please. see you in Livewire. See you, Sean. And I yeah, might be getting one. Oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, oh, sorry. especially when I have all my kids with me because they, they love the track sand. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just it. But I tell you what, I haven't, like I said, I haven't had this this lost 
which one is it? The, Car. the Lost Monarch. The Pipe Dream. Sorry. Oh, the Pipe Dream. Get up here. And if you look at this. What are you doing? I. Give it. This freaking cork isn't the cork that came with it. Oh, it broke? It The very first opening. Really? But if you look, if it'll focus. You, can you recognize who that is or where it goes to? And this is there. a good tip. Yeah, it's a yeah. very popular bottle. It looks familiar. You might need to solo e yourself. E. Oh, was that E. H. Taylor? Bingo. Yeah. Oh, you know, the reason I guess it's because you gave me the initials. I've never actually yeah. seen an E. H. Taylor bottle fit. myself. Yeah, I've never seen an E. H. Taylor. So that's cool, though. So, but it fits this. But I'm telling you, I don't know what happened, but I noticed that it was leaking when I got it. I could see it on the side because, you know, this was hand delivered. Ah. And I noticed that when I grabbed the top of it, I was like, wait a minute, why is that so loose? So, of course, I went like this just to moisten it up. And then it started to leak. Oh, what, what the, the hell? hell? Yeah, exactly. Exactly what I like, said. And so Car. I was slowly Car. moving it left to right to rotate it's it. Delivery, it's fine. And I noticed. I could see in the bottle that it was a crack in the cork. And I go, uh, you've got to be kidding me. So there was no way around it. I had to continue to see how much I could. Oof. And it just broke off. So, believe it or not, I took a corkscrew for a wine. Put it through. Popped it right out. No pieces, no chunks on the inside. I was like, oh, thank you very, very much. Well, okay, I lied. There are very few because there just happens to be one little speck sitting on the side. But in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. And so I was like, now what am I going to do? Well, I was saving a couple of tops. And I remembered that the E.H. Taylors were very similar to this. And so was my, uh, that other one Car I got. Uh, Car uh, Oh my gosh, the triple R. So anyway, so I just grabbed it and I went, okay, let's see. And snap, I mean, a little snug, but not a problem. So let me just tell everybody, save Top the shelf. Cap because you never know. But if you have Redwood Empire and you're an E.H. Taylor drinker, save hmm. them because they're almost a perfect fit. And at some point in time, some point in time, you can't drink whiskey and not have a broken cork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my Alex, Redwood Empire holy smokes, two weeks ago, this. I had the same issue. Yeah, oh, we all have had that issue mm. at least twice. Isaiah, cheers, man. Thanks for popping in. Oh, right. Look at this. And yeah, the, that pipe dream is not bad. It seems to be like the, the, the bastard child of that lineup. Everyone loves the other two. And he kind of poo poos the pipe dream because it's got dickle in it, but it's not bad. Pretty good blend, all, all things considered. What I always find funny is how these corks <laughs> manage to dry out like that and break when there's booze in the bottle and it's humid. I guarantee it's humid in that bottle because I can see the condensation in the neck. But anyway, mm. it's always a pet peeve of mine. And then. I mean, they just need to, they just need to spend a few more dollars on a cork. I'd, I'd spend another dollar or two dollars on the bottle at this point oh, to get yeah. a much better quality cork, or just use the the synthetic. Who cares? I'm not a purist when it comes to that. That's oh, for God. sure. I, I am not. Go. Nope. What? Don't oh, mind man. my noise. How's it going, man? Oh, oh my gosh, I live in a dream. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Sorry about your loss and broken ribs. <sighs> what? Yeah. Hey, Paul. Yeah, I, 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 I broke a rib. Yeah. Ouch. I've done that, too. Last game of the season. I had to sleep in my chair for almost two weeks. Yeah. Last Can't game of the now. season, so... Like I said, I'm going to skip the summer league, so I won't be playing again until the fall. So have a little time to fix the tennis elbow and all the other ailments that I've gained over the past two, three seasons. Oh, yeah. Hey, sure. 21090. Cheers. Cheers, 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 man. Thanks for popping on. 
Mike and I have spent the last three hours chatting it up or <laughs> been here sooner. <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? When you guys got a thriving channel, you know, you've got to discuss content. What'd you say? I've done yard work all weekend and now can hardly move. <laughs> hey, if you're going to become sedentary and numb, you might as well let whiskey do it. It's worked for hundreds of years. Guaranteed. Hey, I don't have a problem with screw caps. Oh, I don't either. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't affect the quality of the whiskey. Like I said, I'm not a purist. Whether it's cork, synthetic cork, <laughs> or screw cap. Some people will say you can't have a screw cap. Some people say the synthetic adds uh, uh, a funk to it, a taste to it, or whatever. Oh, you're full of crap. Please. Sorry, people, but I just don't buy it because I've never tasted it. I've never smelled it. I, I just haven't. I guess you know, I don't have you, a sophisticated you, enough palate to pick that up. Exactly. <laughs> I always say I'm not a connoisseur. <laughs> I'm a common sort, okay? <laughs> so that's why we all fit in. <laughs> we have no problem here. No problem here. Yeah, my tasting hey, notes are, do I like again. it? Is it good or Cheers. is it bad? Exactly. <laughs> is it a hitter or is it a shitter? That's yeah, yeah. Everybody exactly. understands that. Marty says, I got I to gotta make a t-shirt and stuff for that. I, I'm working on it. I've got a couple of things going and I've even got a logo that I think I'm going to go with. I just got to work on it a little bit more. In other words, think about it because I got busy this week, but I really like it. And uh, I can't believe what they did. I'm like, holy smokes, that's it. So I just got to, I got to sit down with one of these and decide is what it comes down to. That is what it comes down to. But I, I really like it. They did a, a great, great job on that thing. Honestly, really, that's really good. Yeah, that's true, Dustin. But it still doesn't. Ha that doesn't happen that often. It can. I've had it happen myself once, but it doesn't happen that often. That's what I'm sipping on. That's what I decided to pull up. Bourbon beginnings, a little hmm. Redwood Empire pipe dream because somebody was uh, drinking Lost Monarch, and I went, "Oh, I haven't had any of those in a while," and so I pulled that and was going to get the Lost Monarch when I got into this little diatribe about pipe dream and how my cork broke and I hadn't even opened it but anyway so that's just how it goes but that's what I'm drinking and it's really good I have I can't tell you the last time I I poured a drop out of that thing it's been months so I can tell you what might be going on my next trip Simon how you doing mm, mm, mm. nice Oh, yeah, so yeah it's about it's about 9 a.m. over there, so coffee time. <laughs> Simon, yeah, get that get that coffee going, man. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. Cheers. But yeah, this is really good. I mean, I wish the proof was a little a little more, but I don't know. I I, I like it. I like yeah, that's true, Dustin. I'll give you that. Mm. Oh God! What do you got in that glass, Paul? Uh, something that you uh, recommended me. Uh, quite a few people have, but I think you were the first. I'm doing a little. Oh, absolutely! We were just talking about. Our oh, business. nice. Who got the wee beastie? You, Jim, right? Me. Yeah. 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 I, I got a wee beastie. Yeah. And, well. and Brian's got it, but I said once you go to that ten. We beastie is just a filler, you know. Yeah. Something you just want to yeah. grab because you want that little smoke and char. But you know, it's just I'm just gonna grab this and drink it. The 10 is something I want to sit down and I just want to sip, but you still don't have to think about it much. It's just a good, good, good little little drop. And as a matter of fact, I've got to get a replacement for this because I'm below half. Because nice. I keep yeah. grabbing this thing. And now that I see that you have that, if I go to this, I'm not going to want to go back to anything else. And so I think I'm going to have a little more Redwood Empire, but I'm going to have the uh, Emerald Giant. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do a little pour of that. 
yeah. next we'll just out. because uh, I know it's yeah, I mean, a rye. But if I get into a peat of scotch to go for me to go back to bourbon, yeah, <laughs> it just isn't going to work. No, I can't go back. Yeah, no. Oof, I can start with bourbon and move to uh, I mean, scotch, but I can't come back. Well, not peat it. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, no. peat it. Um, like I said, it it takes a few sips for me to be able to to drop back, uh, and it just doesn't usually go well. It just doesn't go well. But if I stick with a bourbon or a rye, I don't have a problem with that. I can go back and forth. It's just when I get to north of 100 proof to drop down to 90 or 95. Yeah. A drop of it's like sipping on your water. Cast drink bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I can't. usually do. I, I plan out the bottles I'm going to drink for the night and put them in proof order and start the load and go to high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I try to do that. It doesn't always work out, though. <laughs> but I, that's what I try to do. Because I know yeah. if I start out high, <laughs> I can't go back down low because it just it, it just tastes like water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but when I get to the high, then I know I'm done. <laughs> Does that give it yeah. just a hint and, of smoke, Dustin? Mm. Hmm. So, Bourbon Beginnings, what are you drinking? You know what I'm drinking. You know what Jim's drinking and Slapshot and Paul. What what did you end up pouring? Ooh, this smells good. I have had this open for a while, but I don't even didn't even huh, it mix it because he mixes it with other whiskey. Huh? That's interesting, Dustin. I didn't know that. I don't have a ten at ten at the moment, but the next time I have one on hand, uh, I will definitely give that a try. Hmm. Yeah, the only artifact I have right now is the wee beastie, which I'm not pouring that much because I don't care for it. It's okay, <laughs> but it's just not something I'm reaching for. Smoke and citrus, huh? Huh. I wonder what it would be like. I wonder what it would be like adding a drop to calf strength scotch, non peated. Mm-hmm. Now, see, he's got me thinking. He's got me thinking because <laughs> I haven't opened that bottle of uh, Tomat and Cast Strength yet. I don't know what I'm saving it for. I just haven't gotten around to it because I've got so many other things. And maybe when I got a stream to where I go, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crack a new bottle and go from there. But I'm going to have to open that thing. I'm gonna I'd probably to- take this camping. If I could replace it, which I can't, because this is no, not that bottle. You can get a wild. Yeah, this is ride. the uh, twenty. Uh, it's, either, it's either a twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen uh, wild turkey rye eighty one. It's still it's still got Austin Nichols on the label. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's either up there. Is it? Where is it? It's uh, down Can there in right the text. The Back it up. Oh, pain in the ass. Focus. It's down there in the text. Back it up. There you go. It's, it's down clear, here, but it's uh, too small. But I got you. It's yeah. It's it's yeah, it's down there in the text. I actually had three at one point. One I opened and drank. One I gave to Burt Ben, which and he's opened it and he sent it to somebody in a blind on on the live wire. And this one, which I haven't opened yet, and I'm uh, keeping bunkered because I have plans for a stream with that, and because I can't replace it once it's gone. <laughs> hey, cheers, Ruben. Man. What's up? What's cheers, in the glass? I am drinking a mixture. That's okay. Finishing my blind tonight, and it is four different sets. Oh, that's okay. the regular stuff I get in California. Okay. That's a total wine pick I got in Dallas. This is a pick I got from a good friend in Dallas. And this is a pick I got from a good friend in Houston. 
Mm. So three Texas picks and a California shelf bottle. All in this glass. Interesting. Nice. Ooh. And how's it tasting? This sounds like a wild ride. Hey, does it taste like Sazerac? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like Sazerac. But you know what's funny? You take those mixes, leave it sit about 10 minutes, you know, let it let it get together in there. And sometimes it is absolutely phenomenal. And other times it's a shitter. But you know what? You pour it and you go, I'm going to drink it. I, lo- I lost the sweetness on it because two of these bottles are sweet. One's real woody. And the other one's a uh, nice, good flavor. But it, it, it lost the sweetness. It can do it's that, good. especially if you get a lot of oak oakiness out of it. One, it can offset. Uh, yeah, the one, uh, uh, I forgot which one was real oaky, but one of them, oh, this one right here. That's the Houston pick, was real oaky. Let me see that picture on that thing again. That Houston yeah. pick you just set up? Oh, Okay. Got it. It's a, I believe, a club pick. Dandy? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. But some of them are, some of them That's are probably my, Sazerac's probably my favorite ride. I'm not, I, I, it's turning out I'm not a big ride guy. I don't like the uh, Yippie Kaye. I don't really like a lot of other rides that I've had. Mm-hmm. Another one that is good is the Knob Creek uh, Calf Strength 120 proof. Ooh. It's okay. It's not my favorite. Sazerac, I always run to that. I wouldn't even is count the Yippie like Kaye in, what, in, in with the rise because it's such an oddball. I like it, but it's damn odd. <laughs> you know, when I first opened it, it was a uh, very, uh, to me, like chewing on a pine tree. When I did the blind with the whiskey uh, encore, uh-huh. it had more of a, a finished taste to it. it. It was better than when I first opened it, but it's still not something I would ever try and find again. Sure. The profile just didn't seem to suit you. It, yeah, it's not me. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody the they're not making it anymore. <laughs> So two ten, I'm sipping on. Uh, I Redwood guess we're Empire making it again, but it's only distillery only. News to me. What huh. was that now about the? What was that about the distillery? They're making the the Yipikaye again, but st- distillery only. Ah, uh, I can't confirm or deny that. I did. It might have been. On Livewire, they mentioned it. Was it? Was I talking to Nick? Yeah, the Utahns would know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or Adam, that's what I was saying. It was somebody that, that I, I talked to regularly, and they, I heard that about that coming back. But I can't say if it's distillery only, which, eh, I'm okay with that, if it is. I didn't think it was... Uh, when I got a sample of it, I didn't think it was, you know, that delicious. Right. You know, not that it was terrible. It just, I like rye. It wasn't anything stellar. Hey, Paul. Yes. Hey, man, every time I see you, I think of Orange County Choppers. <laughs> Is it because of the hat? Do you get that a lot? <laughs> no, no, I'm not that no. I'm, I'm not that badass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're better, man. You're better. You're, you're here with us. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Exactly. 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 Nice flex, Dustin. <laughs> Without a doubt. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulty here. I just was noticing my internet connection was starting to 
fade in and out. I'm like, what in the sand? Yeah, I was you noticing know? that. I'm like, what in the sand? Well, between, well, between that, well, between that and that's something. Somebody playing the trash can drums. I'm guessing that's Brian's dog rooting around at the trash can. <laughs> no, that's not mine. No, nah, that's my wife. <laughs> no, no. I just, when I, when I, <laughs> sorry. When, when yeah, I left stream, I put my dog in because one of my neighbor's dogs running around loose. So. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, she she just finished barbecuing me some ribs and stuff. I nice, gotta eat. Nice ah. And my my dog is very dog aggressive and will attack anything that comes in my yard. Mm-hmm. I used to have one of those. So, uh, so, a friend of mine adopted a dog that was a, I want to say a bait dog or something for like dog fights. Uh, yeah. And but it was a golden retriever. Loved everybody. Really? Except another dog. It would just instantly want to tear him up because yeah. of what it went through. Yeah, and that's so how we mine tried, is. We tried to integrate our golden with them, you know, slowly, whatever. She didn't want to have nothing to do with it. I mean, just wanted, I mean, I've never seen such viciousness in a golden retriever. Weird. Never. Yeah. But, mine we got when she was six months old and the house she came from like they had a bunch of pit bulls because she's her mom was lab pit and they just hmm. she had scars on her ears and they just get the crap out of her so she, any dog she's just like now i'm big i can fight back now <laughs> she's like i i remember <laughs> well that's just it they're traumatized yep but she loves people and cats and anything yeah. but dogs like it don't matter if it's a yorkie to a great dane it's a dog she don't like it Mhm. Mhm. Anyways, I gotta get back to two ten ninety. My weekend's going great. I won't say great. It's going good. I'm working on my daughter's car, and that's giving me problems. Oh, but, dude, hey, I hate working thank on you car. for ten ninety. Hate it. But yeah, anymore, so do I. Any more with the electronics in it? You just can't get into it and work on it like you can a nineteen seventy seven VW Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, can't. I can't find the the oil filter wrench for my daughter's BMW. Yeah, it was oh yeah! Now you have to have different wrenches to take off a lousy oil filter when you could buy yeah. one size fits. I'll just get a regular uh, wrench for that and take them all off. Yeah. You know. Now, no, it's like, are you kidding me? So you go to a parts store and they, oh yeah, we've got one for that. It's like forty bucks, and you're like. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Ridiculous. Why? Why do you need a tool now to take off to try to get you to go back to the dealer? Mm-hmm. Oh, it seems like it goes. What it's always that way. That's, that is so stupid. Sorry. That, that just irks me. <laughs> and I know I just, it's like, Holy smokes, but I don't do any more oil changes. I, I gave that up a long time ago. Even though I could lay underneath my truck and probably need something to raise me up to get to it. <laughs> you know, because it sits so high up. But right. uh, I, I'm not changing nothing on it. That's not true. I, I, I did some work on it recently only because it was cheaper for me to buy the part for a hundred bucks and replace it myself than to take it in and have them charge me four or 500 bucks for 30 minutes. It's ridiculous. You know, I don't mind paying somebody, but when you know you're getting ripped off, that's the whole thing. I drive a Ram 2,500. So I'm like, well, see things I can do. When I was working on cars, the average, uh, our rate for automotive was 45. When I left working on cars, it was up to 75. That was over six years ago. Oh, it's a hundred bucks. I don't even know what the average auto rate is now. A hundred bucks. And it, easy. You know, and, and if it takes some fucking 10 minutes, it's automatically charged an hour. Oh, That's yeah. why a lot of people need to change their own shit. That's where YouTube is actually killing the automotive industry because everybody's showing, hey, you need to change this. It only takes this. You pay this much and you put it in like this. 
you're done. Exactly. That's exactly, um, exactly it. I watched a YouTube video and I go, that's it? I mean, I have to get a step stool out to get up to <laughs> that and then get on the, the bumper, step half on the bumper and into the engine to get into it. But I mean, hey, in the 30 minutes from taking it apart, pulling the filter off, putting it back on, putting all the crap around it, which is absolutely junk because it doesn't do anything but just cover stuff. I'm like, I just saved a couple of hundred bucks. Yeah, you did. And then, and and then, then you then, got people still in your catalytic converter now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's terrible. No wonder why you got to drink whiskey. You need, to stay calm. <laughs> you need to stay calm about this stuff. But I just don't. I mean, anymore, just like he was just saying, you got to buy a lousy part to take an oil filter off. How dumb is that? I remember going to Snap-on or Mac. I can't remember which one. But I needed a special Torx screwdriver that was about two and a half feet long to get in to adjust headlights on a GM. So the freaking thing was like this long to fit back in there. And it's very narrow, very small shaft to get in there and adjust headlights. And at that time, I think it cost me almost 45 bucks. And we're talking 1987, give or take. Right. And you couldn't go to Craftsman and get it because that was too specialized. It was years later that Craftsman got into more specialized tool for what they call the professional and came out with that line and started competing against Snap-on, Mac, Cornwell, and Matco. And uh, it's hey, just ridiculous. I, I got a question. Is everybody lagging in here right now? Mine's caught up. So I my, think I'm doing my, good. Fine. My and computer's Jack, usually yeah. slow, but uh, I'm. I think I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm staying up yeah. with everybody. I see mine, seen mine lags, and then it catches up. I'm gonna step out for a minute. I'm gonna come back in, guys. Okay. Okay. Oh, Dustin. Yeah, you get you get taken to the freaking cleaners for stuff <laughs> anywhere you go. And even if you go to a regular shop, they think that, you know, oh, my gosh, it's this, it's that. Calipers are calipers, whether it's BMW, Mercedes, or Chevy. Brake pads are brake pads, but you got to get the right ones. And sometimes it's absolutely worth getting the actual manufacturer ones versus ones from Napa or AutoZone or somewhere else. It's just something about how they spec it out. On particularly when it comes to brake pads, that that's messed up, Scott. It just it's awful. I mean, you get taken to the cleaners on it. It's that's pretty messed up, Scott. Oh yeah. Well, the school I work at, one of the teachers had both of her stolen off her Toyota, and the thing oh. about it was, I saw them. I looked at it because I heard a noise in the parking lot, and I looked over. But I didn't see anything unusual. I just saw someone reach down and pick something up. So I didn't think much of it. Found out the next day what happened. So the police called me, our school police, and I talked to them. So I said, look, I gave him every information. He goes, well, he says, that's pretty darn good for not paying attention. I go, well, I wasn't. But it was an unusual noise. And the car was backed in instead of pulled in. And so... Those different things caused me to look, and I says, this was the car, this was what description I could give, but I could not tell you anything else because I physically did not see faces, but I saw arms, I saw shirts, I saw this, and so by that, giving them the time, they could take and look at the cameras in the parking lot and then see who came and who went to where I came in so that, I mean, because looking at video, you can spend hours looking at absolutely nothing 
and then that helped them, you know, immensely. But who knows? But it's it's a big thing here, a big thing, and they'll do it in broad daylight. You know, they'll get underneath there and, and steal stuff like that all oh, yeah. the time. Yeah, now they have the the strap you can add to it to to keep them from being able to take it. It's like a titanium strap. Um, they're they're ah. putting something on the pipe. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, and you can buy it. So they just can't take that zip saw underneath the thing. Yeah, you know, in, in two minutes, yep. boom, boom, it's gone. Yeah, it, it'll make them work harder for it if they're gonna do it and make more noise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's just a shame. It is absolutely just a shame. Yep. Anywho, anyhow, I'm telling uh, you, what, I'm glad you had showed me that uh, lot or that Redwood Empire because <laughs> I haven't visited these in a while, and I'm like, wow. What about well, happy to help? Yeah. And, uh, 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 seeing Scott Pixley in the chat reminds me, I might be getting one more bottle tomorrow if the store actually has to fulfill my order, and if I do. You can see it on Fifth Ward and Tailgate tomorrow because it's relevant to his channel. Oh my gosh. Well, but see, see, when if he I comes get on, it. I'm at work. I'm not holding my when breath. You guys cause... don't stream when I'm on my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? When are you usually on your lunch? So, where you are, it would be closer to midnight. <laughs> for you. That's like, what? <laughs> Because I usually go between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. my time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could I could take it any time, but I'd rather they give me the option. I can just work, get all my stuff done, and then take an hour or a 30 and two 15s or whatever. I hate doing that. Once in a while, if I'm really hungry or whatever, you know what? I'm just going to take a 30. And then I'll eat something real quick, get something to drink, and then hit it for the next couple of hours. And then the last 30, I'm done. But and, and I just I just would rather keep going. Yeah. I just don't yeah. want to stop. I just want to keep, 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 keep going. And then once I'm done, I'm done. But anywho, anywho, anywho. So what new bottles have you bought, Paul? Anything in particular? Um, I I've been able to snag a couple of Cream of Kentuckys, and uh, they're here. They're here now, finally. Yeah, the Cream of Kentucky. Yeah, I mean they—they they, as fast as they get here, though they disappear. Yeah, the the place I big like, it's the same place I bought this art bag for forty seven. Uh, the Cream of Kentuckys, I think he had them for like eighty nine bucks. That's and, not too bad. And yeah. that art bag 10 for 47, that's a good price. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I was going to pick it up for 56 in Virginia. When I was in Virginia, I picked up a couple of John J. Bowman's. They had them sitting on the shelf for less than 50. So bought two of those. Uh, so yeah. In my Bowman. I see how you are. <laughs> <laughs> All they have out here right now is like Isaac and uh you know the Bowman brothers so and uh they'll they'll have John J Bowman but it was a lot more accessible like a year ago sitting on shelves than it is now. Mm. But cuz I haven't I haven't seen it on the shelf out here in a, in a while so <clears throat> I go up to Virginia and just Sitting on the shelves, so picked up a couple. Have you cracked open that uh, Van Winkle that you got, Anthony? I'm saving that for either my birthday or my dad's birthday in June. But nice. I actually got him the Elmer T. Lee. Yeah. He doesn't know. So probably won't be till June. Okay. I'm going to take both of them. And then I got him a 1792. Uh, small batch. I got. Uh, I'm gonna bring up that Basil Hayden's to him, because um, I know he'll drink it. Um, and then I've got a so... few more. So, hey, what's up, buddy? What's shaking? What's up, Mike? Can y'all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Aren't we supposed to? Yes. Just making okay. sure. Oh, 
Or oh, Ruben, I saw Ruben on here a minute ago. I got it. He was, he was it. having internet issues. Yeah, uh, he, he yeah. was lagging, so he, he jumped just off. Just said in the so. chat that, that he'll be back in a minute. He, his wow. wife just served him served him dinner. <laughs> Nano B, cheers, buddy. Nice to see you. Thanks for popping in. Uh, Mike's just to your making stream, sure Mike. everything's working for Livewire, so he came on my stream. I got a bottle to pop. Test everything out. Yeah, that's what I do. No, I have... <laughs> I've been playing with cameras today, doing some pictures. Ah. So, I'll, you know, be. just before my stream, everything was perfect. Then, like two or three minutes before, the camera went out. This went out. That went out. I'm like, what in the heck? I Isn't restarted that how it always goes? everything. Restarted everything before the stream. Had everything up, queued in, dialed in, ready to go. <laughs> I don't know what happened? It just started to go south, and I'm like, "What? I'm just sitting here waiting." Evil <laughs> popped in. Uh, what are we pouring? Andrew Chance. My money is on table games. <laughs> Scott, I work for the I work for the school district here, and uh, I do whatever they tell me, but basically maintenance. Mark Amadecker. Hey, Mark. Good evening, man. Thanks for popping in. Oh, you what guys are we drinking? Just in, make sure you hit the like button. What are we drinking? I'm gonna jump to this Buffalo Trace uh, store yeah, nice. a little bit. Yeah. There you go. I'm drinking a little. I'm just finishing up the Redwood Empire, the pipe dream. I was started out on Fusion <clears throat> Three, and then uh, who knows where I'll go? I think I might do Scotch. I don't know. What do you got, Mike? I'm trying to put the proof is on my... Yeah, yesterday I, I uh a wi the the channel Whiskey Row had a meetup here in my town. And That's cool. uh they uh, had a oh, bottle my. of the Stranahan's cast strength oh, and nice. a bottle of Sam Houston fifteen. Very hill club. So I was able to try those two for the first time. Is that where you uh, had lunch at or something? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah it looked like good times. Time. Yeah, it was a good time. No table games, man. No, Andrew. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. 24 years in that casino business. <laughs> I saw the Davilars were hanging out with uh, Lone Wanderer 360. Oh, that's nice. Really? Cheers, Nick. Well, cheers, Nick. I don't know if there was a consensus, Mark. I mean, I think we all had a lot of ideas. I, mean, um, I think the only consensus bottle was was Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> well, that's a that is a legacy bottle. The Wild Turkey 101, yeah. the old Grandag bottled and bond, and mm. something like Old Tub or something like that. I could those see. are those are legacy bottles. They're I, they have they're there time and time again. So yesterday, um, yes or last weekend, I went camping, and the guy next to us in the campsite was <laughs> I, I let him try. Elijah, or uh, sorry, Jack Daniel's single barrel barrel proof, uh, Stranahan's single barrel barrel strength pick, and Rossville Union rye pick. Needless to say, he drank over half a bottle of the Rossville Union. Yeah, you, you were complaining about that. So, actually, we saw Rossville Union, Rossville Union today. I didn't pick it up though. Was it a pick or just Rossville Union? Uh, it was just the uh, regular uh, uh, ninety-something proof Rossville Union. Oh yeah, yeah, I've never had that. I've only had this pick, and I only had a little bit of it. And <laughs> I still have some though. So what? What? What are you going to start being one of your normal camping trip? What are you going to start taking with you, man? I well, mean, it's like going to be a staple or. Are you going to have a rotating stock? Like one of my staples is just the, uh, all the uh, smoke wagons from straight bourbon to small batch to uncut unfiltered, because that fits such a wide group of people from beginners to advanced. And then I have, uh, I usually take a discovery series, a fusion series, um, might take a couple of scotches and so on and so forth. 
Yeah, I think the uh, the bottom line is the high, high proofs are not really shareable unless the people are really whiskey people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not just your normal Jack Daniels swillers. Yeah, like I, I would say something like, you know, the small batch smoke wagon might be great for a lot of people. Um You know, something something of that nature. You know what might be good? A Bell Mead 108. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, That's true. Barn door. I don't know. I'm saying fuck it, and I'm just bringing a peated scotch next one. <laughs> say, fuck it. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, you're going to be smelling campfire anyway. You might as well get smoke in your glass, too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. maybe a Lagavulin sixteen, something that you like. Just uh, you smell smoke in your nose from breathing it, and then you're burping it all night. It's great. Oh, I want to bring something. Bring something that I'm gonna have to think about, though. That's my one of my hard requirements is it's got to be something I don't have to think about while I'm drinking. And Lagavulin is gonna make me think, and it's gonna and, and it's not gonna be any fun. Oh yeah, it's got story time. Mm. I'll just bring this. I definitely not bring an Octomore. What are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Moose. Hey, Moose. What's up, Alex? Moose. Hey, how's it, how's it going? going? There in the land of Canada, eh? I only hey. spent spent the good portion of the day cleaning up raw sewage. But it's all good. Oh, wow! Well, that's always oh, fun. You need a terrible. drink, then. That's for sure. After that, oh, I didn't know my toilet flushed to... north. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, we got him a bunch of American bullshit. <laughs> what? Oh, show oh. off! Oh. You see what he's doing there? Mm-hmm. All right, knock uh -huh. it off, you pearl. <laughs> show him, show him, Alex. Yes. Yeah, whiskey fun. Does the lighting look jacked up, or does it look okay? Look okay. Well, mine point two. two. It looked dark for some oh, reason. That's so does a good mine one. now. Mike. Get those dogs. Oh. Cheers, Dan. So this is what I poured now. Oh, nice really? Substance. JD's going to like that. Yeah. Hey, cheers. Cheers, sir. Yeah, that, looks, right. dog. that looks too bright, huh? Hey, yeah, you can still door. see you. Cheers. Thanks for yeah. popping in. Yeah, you're trying to look a little orange. Yeah, we can still see you. <laughs> yeah, the rate you're going, Anthony, you're gonna have quite the crowd to send over to send over to Livewire. We're only coming on here because we don't want to be on Livewire. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, Livewire doesn't care. You know, that's just how they are. I fucking need you, Alex. You don't know me. You don't hey. know me. No, I took tomorrow off because I have a contractor coming to the rental house here to deal with the basement. Uh, we had yeah, three, I mean, three feet of water. <laughs> wow good god we had two days of rain yeah. like the whole area was everybody was just pumping houses out and everything like hey great mcdonald like i actually had to stand in this water to clear my drain oh it was up to my waist oh, oh, oh my god, god. dude hey, i sure had a long shower kind of alex all i rock. heard in that whole thing oh. was you're coming on live wire whiskey because you don't have to work tomorrow <laughs> yeah. I told you I would come on just because we're gonna crack a bottle. Oh, you said we'd crack an Octomore. Greg McDonald, hold on, hold on, Mike. I can't quite see that. Hold on, let's see. There we go. Hey, Greg. Highland Park Cask Strength Batch Two. It's hard to read that, right? I don't even know how to pronounce that one. What? I can't even read it. Whiskey. Yeah. Lagavulin 12. 2021. 2021. 2021. Oh, that's Lion's Fire. What was that other one you had? Mike, did it's you couldn't pronounce? Tula Badu. Oh, Tula Barden. Tula Barden, that's it, yeah. Yep. Come on, baby. There you go. There you go. It's oh. the Murray Cask Strength 12-year 
2005 to 2017 huh. at 56.3. I'm doing scotches tonight, yo. Oh, Mike, is that yeah, the one? Yeah. I thought you guys were doing Yellowstone. Your thumbnail was a lie. No, that was just a th- I mean, I might do Yellowstone. That's the 2021 edition. Anthony's yeah. got it, too. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I was about to say, where the hell is it? There it is. It's always at hand reach. Yellowstone. Yeah. So you drinking that, too, tonight, Mike? Yeah, I'm drinking some Yellowstone. Yellowstone. I'm drinking uh, some scotches. I got, I have a new Lucky Seven. I'm gonna crack tonight. Oh, cool. Nice. Mm-hmm. I don't want to call it King of Kentucky replacement because Top Shelf Dustin called it that. Oh, ah, I won, that's high I won, praise. I won this bottle from Marty like a month and a half ago, and I still haven't cracked it. I need to get that sucker. Mm. Look I at made a six-year-old. Six year. It's a mm. pick. Stream stuck, unfortunately, on Mike's face. <laughs> oh, it did? I mean, it looks fine to us. I, I don't know what the issue there is. Dogs been sending a report of the room. You know, I, mean, you know what? I didn't even read this one. This is one of the ones I won on HBR's channel. Ah. <laughs> well, that's an image you'll never get out of your head. Just print it out and put it on the scarecrow in the garden. There you go. Hey, zoom in on that barrel number. Barrel. I won't, but I'll let you do it. 14, look at that. No, right? Barrel 69er. Number. Yeah, sugar kitty. Woo! <laughs> he said 69. <laughs> Shut up, Davis. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Mike. Good evening. <clears throat> Don't mind us. We're all just off on our own tangent here. You know. Man. Man. That's for sure. That is for sure. Well, I got to order something else. We ran, we ran over to our, our new house on Saturday after hours here was flooding. And I don't blame you. I would have done the same thing. And there's no water. There was no oh, water in the new house. So it's like, yes. <laughs> That's good. Did Close you pay storage. the bill? or What's that? <laughs> Did you pay the bill over there? No, no, I'm talking about no raw sewage and flooding in that house. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh. So we said you went over there for some peace. Oh, it's it's nice because we gutted the kitchen and it actually feels more comfortable than what we had to deal with. <laughs> and and what he's saying is the raw sewage in his basement is his landlord's problem, not his. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just had to do we we did about four truckloads of stuff that was floating. Ugh. Ugh. Probably all ruined. Oh yeah, everything. That sucks. No, well, it's at least it's not a finished basement down there. So it was just like some of our stuff that you know when you uh, collect stuff and you don't yeah. know why you still have it. That's what was floating. Yeah. We, while our washer and dryers hooped, the water was almost to the top of the washing machines. Oh yeah, cow. Hmm. I'll be crazy. right back. Continue oh. on, guys. I gotta grab something. It you actually have runners was, insurance, Alex. Like yeah. That. The washing machine, okay, so the dryer was still standing up, and we didn't even know. So today, when the water went away last night, went down there, the washing machine was on its side. So it actually oh, picked God. up the washing machine and was floating at one point in life. <laughs> so you don't have wow. a sewer. You don't have a sewer. You have a, what is it? Well, we're on uh, city water. That's city cool. water and sewer. So I mean. <laughs> oh, so why did it back up like that then? Because it all flooded. Yeah, just the rain. Just too uh, much rain. The, the, the backed everything up. Yeah, and it came back into houses. <laughs> yeah, because it sounds like it'd be like something like a septic tank. But uh, yeah, that's no. what I was thinking. Septic. I couldn't no. pull the word out. We're on city city everything here, so they just couldn't deal with like the infrastructure. Something went down, and everything came up. <laughs> was it only your house, or did all your neighbors have that problem? Oh, Jesus no. Lord. About probably fifty percent of Fort Francis had it happen. That's terrible, barn door. <laughs> Insurance is going to lose some money now. You can see all the all the rest- <laughs> restoration companies all over town right now. I was driving around today. All these companies are in town. 
They're all driving around with smiles on their face because oh, they're yeah. about to get paid. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, barn door. I don't even think <laughs> you're getting ear infection from that. If you screen off the photos, then you basically have a blow ground flu. Yeah. They're gonna have they're they're gonna have um for sure money. <laughs> oh yeah. Because straight from the insurance company. <laughs> Oof. Guaranteed finance. Yeah, they're gonna have to probably pay out of pocket. You know what's funny is in Colorado now, materials are so hard to get, they're like <laughs> They're hoping we don't have a hail, heavy hail uh, summer. Yeah. Because mm. they said shingles and roofing roofing material is like a year out. Oh, oh my hmm. cow. Jeez. Wow. Well, you're going to start to put tarps up there and nail them down. Mm. Well, we got, you, you probably have to. You, 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 you near the mirror to Rocky Mountains, just get some slate and, and make a slate roof. Yeah, there you go. We we had some little bit bigger than golf ball size hail a couple of years ago. Totally yeah. fucked up my truck. Yeah, that'll do it. It like put holes in the grass. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, when it hit the ground, it like yeah. made big like holes in the grass. Like it was crazy. Holy like, like it's raining, it's raining and, rocks. And they're not perfectly round. Child. The the side that's at the top is like spiked right so it's like it looks like ice fire you know because it's got like the the way it freezes going up the ice yeah. holy that's like some kind of science fiction movie you'd be outside and just be like ah! in October. Jeez. dude it would have it would have killed it it would have killed somebody it might have i don't know killing all the stray cats oh sorry, and then sorry, i found out my tonneau cover is not covered by my insurance policy because you have to have an extra rider for your tonneau cover I figure it makes it look like, you know, I'm tough. <laughs> well, Just maybe. a tonneau cover. Yeah. I put an old man topper on my new truck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Tell me you topper. didn't do that, Alex. Oh, what, I did, cap? man. I did. I'll give you a picture. I'll show you. Since when is a cap Alex an old man like, topper? Alex <laughs> makes that, you know, sweet ass, you know, four by four lifted look like grandpa's truck. Yeah, because it has man. a cap on it. It's like farm truck from uh, Street Outlaws. Oh, <laughs> Alex! <laughs> Alex, don't do that. That looks no. fine. <laughs> that looks fine. What's your beef? That's because uh, Mike Mike doesn't like real trucks. Ha! Are you gonna camp in that or something? Is that why you did that? No, that's for my dogs. Yeah. Six thousand touch dollar touch for my dogs. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> crazy! That's all I can say. Phew. No, Greg, I got it fixed. So it's interesting the, the that the dent. Look, there's like dent look, doctor or something that like that. Good. They do it and don't charge you the. They don't look the bad. That's a good looking topper, actually. I'm not gonna lie. The side windows open. They they open up like this, like they flip open so you can reach. I totally inside. camp in that shit. I'm just telling you right now. Well, that's oh, where yeah. you'd be staying if you ever visited me, because I am in the middle of ah. Oswald right now. Hey, well, <laughs> that's you where go. you're going to come visit us in June, right? Uh, well, sh well, we will see. <laughs> yeah. That's a no. Just say no, bro. You don't have to, like, lead me on. <laughs> it's, it's not just that. It's, we're gutting our house right now to get the new cabinets and all the new flooring put in for the contractor to do its work. We don't know what the price is yet. <laughs> mm. I did find out, and I'll I, I won't spring the name right now, but I found out we are getting a SoCal fella that's going to show up to the June meetup, so that'll be cool. Oh. SoCal. Here, let me mm -hmm. see if I can. Um... Should I do a scotch since I'm on Anthony's stream right now? What should I pour? Oh, that's, that's it. Twist my arm, Mike. <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, gentlemen, I got to wrap this up. I got to move inside, so I got to dismantle out here and move on in. So I'll see I you on the wire. All right. All right. Slap Cheers, man. See you in a minute. See you in a little while, buddy. A little, you little, guys. Little, little wire, a little while. A little while. <laughs> a little wire on live little wire. wire. <laughs> little wire. <laughs> Nothing like that. I swear I'm not drunk. <laughs> do I go straight full-blown peated, or do I go with one of uh... – Alex do is not do not parents. start off peated. I wouldn't go peated if you're, you're doing. If you, yeah, I wouldn't go peated if you're planning on pouring. That's, a, the that's the hot water tank. Yeah, that's the top element. 
I don't know if you guys oh, ever yeah. look at your hot water oh, tanks. Oh shit! How deep the water is. That's all nasty shit water. Ugh. Oh yeah, very much so. Oh, dude, man, terrible. God, you shit a lot, bro. It definitely wasn't fishing in it. Oh fuck so, no! So do a little bobbing for apples. Yeah. Let me ask you. Does your? I'm sure you have renter's insurance. Yep. Yeah, but like we're moving to our new house eventually here anyway. Mm -hmm. My washer and dryer is the only really thing that's absolutely foo barred because I own the washer and dryer. Mm. Oh, we did own. We're just going to buy a new one. Be right back. Got to grab the dog for a second. Dude, this is getting harder to find now. This is it the 18? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think I have that. I bought a um, 21, 28 year old. Um, Brooklonic coming. Ooh. Some Dude, kind of, this might be my favorite scotch in the whole world right here. I'm just telling you. The the bottling was an independent baller that does this 28 year old. The Tomatin 18, Dustin. I still haven't got my bottles yet. They're freaking taking a month now. Yep, it's just the sherry cask finish 18. Sherry cask. What's the ABV on that? Uh, I want to say 46. Yep, forty six. Okay, that's that's good. I like like forty six is like my minimum. You know, Mike. Now that I look at it, your your lighting is definitely kind of weird. Like Minus? it's uh, darker than it usually is. Usually, that dartboard in the back is clearly visible. Like you can see the the colors on the dartboard, and it's kind of everything's kind of shadowy in the back. Oh, good. But my face yeah. looks good, right? Because that's the important part. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we well, were hoping that would be shadowed, but you know. sorry, you're, my you're face ring looks light. clear. Yeah, clear. Your, face, your lighting looks clear. Your yeah. ring light is working perfectly. <laughs> your lighting looks great. <laughs> so you're drinking a Tomatin, the 15, right? No, the 18. Oh, excuse the shit out of me. I, know. <laughs> I would never drink a 15. Mike starts drinking scotch. He's just snooty now. <laughs> Everything about snow is this, shadowy. Yeah. Your lighting's fine. I mean, it's not bad. I'm just it's, it's not as it's it's brightly whatever lit as you it did before. Is. That's all. It's better now. In other words, before when you first asked, I said it looked a little dark. So what you did after that is fine. Now it looks like there's more light on the right side of your face. But that's yeah, right. there is the lighting is all on the right. Okay. Okay. Use your casting you know. couch lighting. That works out well. There you go. Exactly. I can't, man. That lighting makes everything look bigger. And I'm trying to look skinny. <laughs> yeah. Well. Fish, fish eye lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The fish eye lens. Although some of those lenses are pretty darn. I've got one. And it takes some pretty nice pictures. Yeah. It doesn't fit this particular camera. So. Oh, well. What camera do it's, you use, Anthony? Uh Sony. Which one? Was it 6600? Ooh, goddamn. Yeah. You should have gotten the A7 or something, man. Like You, you know what? what? I looked at the A7. The difference in the in the uh sensor cuz mine is just the is it's not the full size, it's the I call it the yeah, mid size. It's the crop sensor, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You're not talking much difference for the money. So and the features on this one were a little better for what I wanted than on that. So I waited for, matter of fact, I drive my wife crazy because we drove to different places. I mean, when I was up in Cedar City looking at them, I was, you know, here in, in, in Nevada and a few other places because last year they were just hard to find. They still are. And um, so... I found this one that had what I wanted. And after the research for what I want to do, particularly this video for photography and stuff, I just like what it had to offer. I wanted to stay with Canon because that's what I originally had, but it just didn't compare to what Sony had to offer. No, the A6600 is their top of the long, top of the line vlogging camera. And, um, it's not yeah. really a photography camera as much. Like the A7 is more for photography, less for video. I tell you what, um, you 
get I forget what the lens is for because it's yeah. a full frame. <laughs> Eight seven is full frame. Yeah. But you know what? Full frame versus the crop. Like I said, you're not missing much. Yeah, the only advantage is when you start talking lens and aperture because the crop lenses add 1.6 to any aperture setting. One, yep. one times 1. 1.6. Yeah. So like uh, if you had a 1.0 lens, it's actually 1.6 aperture. Yep. But like I said, it's I just like the size of it. And this yeah, was size is, newer. I have a 6100. I was just wondering. I don't <laughs> I don't have the A7. <laughs> well, McDonald's. if you didn't buy the Octomore, guess what you could have? Oh. <laughs> Greg. Oh, 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 see? I bought oh, I should have poured one of his. Why did I do that? There you go. <sighs> Adriana. See, I got the camera first <laughs> before I started doing oh, this. Hey. <laughs> Adriana. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back to my back to my Bluetooth headset as soon as I get my laptop back tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah. you're not going to have it for Livewire? No, it was supposed to come today via FedEx Ground, and it didn't move fast enough, so it's still in Connecticut. But I should have it tomorrow. So oh. for for one more night, I have to use the janky setup with the with the cell phone webcam and the sh shaky mount bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but I'm here. <laughs> but you're here. Hey. Hey Greg, which uh, which one of these should I pour first, buddy? Hey, hey. Never, mind. Never mind. Never mind. I got birds. Oh, god damn! Had, I uh, didn't mean to scare you off, bro. I I like, oh, live, live wires here. Gotta go. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> run though, Anthony. I gotta get ready. Adam Don't just dropped into our stream yard, so I gotta roll. Don't run because at your age you break a hip, dude. I do running. not want to break a hip. I'll tell you that. Well, we'll we'll see you guys in about ten minutes. All right. All see right. you later, Anthony. Appreciate yep. it. See you guys. Ciao. Cheers, Mike. But oh, wow. I, I I think they're scared of you, Adriana. Yeah. They know you don't fool around in that knife. You know, <laughs> you don't like, discriminate. Uh, they Alice. just know how she is. Oh, Greg, this is not on the loan from Eric. It's a, uh, a former employer trash can special. <laughs> former employer trash can special. All right. There you go. Well, I'm not, oh. well, I was going to get into a scotch, but it's like, <sighs> I mean, it's a nice headset. It's a Plantronics. I will be pouring into the 12.1 or 12.2 with Mike. Well, when's he gonna is nice. is he gonna start off with that or what? I don't know. He said to me because I was plan I was supposed to go to work tomorrow, but also didn't plan a, a flooding. Um, well, who does? I didn't plan the one I had in July. So I took tomorrow off just because of the contractor, and he said, he says, "Oh, you got to get off for nine o'clock." He says we because he was congratulating me in text about buying the house. He says, "Oh, well." And uh, he says, "I'll crack one of my new uh, Octomores." He says, "We can have a pour." I says, "Okay, mm -hmm. I'll try to make it." Oh. Okay. I don't know when he planned on it. I mean, I wasn't planning on staying up till like two in the morning until he cracks it. Not, uh, hey, that's right. Tell him, look, that ain't happening. <laughs> so you got to actually work and do something tomorrow at the new house, or? Yeah, what's well, going to happen once I just let the contractor in here, and then. Because I got to put my dogs away and all that. And oh, yeah, they're vicious. Ah, I just they're just gonna be a pain in the ass. <laughs> and then, um, once he's done, I ain't going to work, like, I'm just gonna just start shipping some stuff over to the other house. <laughs> I'm scared you're just the first person I kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but. Yeah, that's a shame. I mean, it is. Like I was just saying, everything technically that that water touched. Yeah. Bad. Oh, yeah, very much. Yeah, it's I mean, it does have to go. I mean, I, I've cleaned up that stuff. When I say professionally, oversaw the remediation in hotels. Yeah. So, Thank yeah. God it touched all my exercise equipment. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, you got to get rid of that. He wasn't yeah. a total loss. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an excuse to get rid of that shit out of my face. <laughs> yeah. Now you can get some better stuff, you know, the kind that actually is automatic. You just push a button and it starts working and you just sit yeah. back, drink a beer, watch well, while it goes. Well, it was just the the weights and that were downstairs. That's all. I mean, they're metal weights. I mean, I could probably bleach and pressure spray them. Yeah. The the yeah. bench I'm not keeping because that's all that like, you know the foam oh, bench. Yeah. yeah. I'm that's just gone. gonna say yeah. That, you know, any drywall has to go. Well, happily, that's it's all just a concrete basement, so there's no. It's not finished or nothing like that. It's like mm-hmm. old house basement where you don't. Do much down there except wash clothes and... mm. but wow so now is the is the city coming out and making sure that everything is clean up to your house no they just made sure they didn't come knocking on doors to even know if, if the flooding was still happening they just they just pumped all this the drains to the storm sewers like that's what they're doing i was pumping there's the sewer to the storm sewers and that goes into wherever untreated. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I know. And that, and they, they were making announcements. If you have a sub pump to take it out of winter mode and run it across to the, the storm drains, because winter mode is when you have it right into your, your main drains, like sewage. About, sewer drains. about time he shows up to the party. <laughs> well, I don't know. All I cared about was that we took, we got keys to the new house on Friday. And then when this was flooding, we're like, oh shit. <laughs> That's all you know, you just get the keys in your other houses. Oh, your house is like, no, it wasn't. It was a little damp, but it was not water in there. Like little, like nothing. It's like, yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Love Canal. Yep. Oh, God. Exactly. Exactly. If I was crazy enough, I would have took my floaties and floated around my basement. <laughs> no, you could have. just no. You could have you had your seen. mankini on, Ugh. on a floaty, Ugh. and had I, a man, picture when taken. I had to when I had to make the make sure the drain wasn't plugged. I was in less than a mankini, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> gross. <laughs> I sure hope you had the right Ugh. things plugged up and wrapped up. That's oh, all shit. I can say. Oh, everything. Yeah, no, that wasn't in the water yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's um, I I I'm happy I'm moving out of here. I, yeah, there's only about a condom and a cork. <laughs> there he is. Is it gonna work? Yeah, my wife told me to turn off my TV. <laughs> so because I was I was watching on the TV too, so I could see the chat yeah. plus here, and it was like robots and shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you um, get a little feedback. There's a delay in it, and then you get the echoing, and it is instantly you know. You yeah, it's weird. Wrong here. So now that the TV's off, it seems fine. Amazing, isn't it? Um, okay. But I, I had downloaded a stream yard on my phone after a Burbank stream last night. So oh, I'm wondering huh. if that has something to do with it, too. I'm running it on my windows and I don't have a problem with it. And then when I'm on my iPad uh, with Safari, <laughs> it seems to be fine. The only one that doesn't like it is the phone. Don't know right. why. Right, okay. Don't know why, but it is what it is. But as far as for, for anything, it seems, let me just say, I don't want to jinx myself. It's been working real good. My, I get the problems with the internet connection and no rhyme, right. no reason. It just goes, there's nothing I can do. That's the provider. And, you know, that's what you pay all that money for, I guess. I don't know, but that's, that's just how it, that's just how it rolls. You know, just how it rolls. Yeah, I need to invent something that people pay money and it fucks up and they still want to do it. Well, the thing about it is, is they are the best provider in town. What I mean by that, as far as the fastest service versus Embark or whatever they're calling the other one now with all the other things that are out there. And so you just stay with it because 
it's the lesser of two evils. Let's just say, you know, do I lead them and go with evil one or evil two? It, right. I've been with them for over 20 some years. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm not going to go down that road. And so when it, when it fires on all the cylinders, it's like that. And right now I don't want to jinx myself before we pop over to live wire, but um, it's going good for a while there. I was watching it and I could see my, outgoing just going it was just tanking and when i get to around five six zero. millibytes per second i know i'm gonna drop out at some point well it did right. i was watching in my indicator and then it jumped back up to 30 40 75 100 you know you know 250 and then i'm like okay well when i get up to that 250 range it's like boom it's it's like a hot night through butter so, I mean, I don't have problems, but when I get down below 50, then it gets shaky. So interesting. It is. It is an interesting life when you're a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> Just before, you know, we started, I had everything queued up. Everything was working great. And like two minutes before, three minutes before the camera, just something happened. It went out. I couldn't reset it. Uh, it wouldn't reconnect with the laptop. So I literally, and I restarted everything a half hour before everything. So everything was fresh. Everything was connected. Everything was on. Everything was working. Two minutes before doom, I had to redo it all again. So I don't know what happened or why. Something. Yeah, just I'm, I'm still learning all this shit. Oh, a couple, all of, a couple of people asked me to uh, get StreamYard for my channel. So I'm trying to do it all. I haven't actually done it on my channel yet because I'm still trying to figure it all out. It's easy once you get through the setup and then right. learn its yeah. little little ins and outs because that's what I'm using. It's the simplest. There's other versions out there. Jim, what's the one you use? Uh, Restream.io. So he uses Restream. And that's another easy one basically but there's that sounds like something from russia uh <laughs> ukraine actually <laughs> so we don't know how long that's gonna go right or at least the uh founders are ukrainian i don't know if it's actually based out of ukraine but it's definitely not mm -hmm. russian all right it's time for live wire <laughs> yeah but Ruben, you know it, it's well, just one of those on. things that, that you have to uh you have to just work out and work through when you stream they happen, okay. and you just have to be ready with Plan B. And go I'm, I'm waiting there. to get a new laptop for it all. I don't want to do it on this one; it's too old. Well, and that's so. another thing. So that's one reason why I had to upgrade my camera, and I upgraded my camera before I really got into streaming. That's what I was just picking on Mike about. I went basically top of the line in this particular brand because one, I like photography, but two, I said, you know what? That's what I'm just going for. So that's just what I did. And then I got the la I got the laptop first and the camera, but my old camera was too old for the technology today. Right. That sense? It was no longer supported. So I had all the updates up to, I want to say like 15 or 16. After that, there just was no more for it, for it. And it couldn't, it just didn't work well with the technology now. So when did you so get the camera? I was using a patch to get it to work, and that patch was real sketchy. So I finally says, "Forget it. Let me get a different camera." And anyway, so I just went with the Sony. But I'm very happy with it as far as the quality goes. Picked up right. a separate mic, the whole nine yards, and almost all the problems went away. The biggest problem I have is what everyone has from time to time. And that's the connection. And that's your internet service provider. And none of us can do anything about that. Yeah. That is the whole mess. But I, what I will tell you is, is don't use Wi-Fi when you're doing your lives. Use a copper. In other words, use a wire from your router directly to your CPU or your laptop. Your best, fastest connection at all times 
So go so wire straight to the router. Yep. Yep. From your laptop, you get cat five, run yeah. it right over, done. Done. Yeah. It has you nothing no to do with Wi Fi. You're yeah. on your own direct line and it's just firing as fast as it can go. Where Wi Fi, everyone's right, okay. pulling on it. So the rest of your house is pulling on the Wi-Fi. So think of the kids, the wife, and everyone else who might no, be. No, I, I tell the kids, shut the shit off. Well, exactly. But you won't have to you're because wired. you're on a whole different platform. Don't tell them that. But you're on a I whole I don't have different... to. I kick them all out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> my, my son lives in Corona. My daughter's in Long Beach. My other two daughters are in Fullerton. Oh, Literally, you kicked them out. All right, there you go, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when they turn eighteen, get the fuck out. That's a Mexican That's thing. <laughs> I hear. I, I mean, this is it. All right, guys. So, all right. Well, live wires on, people. It's been great having you there. Let's get all over there, support them because you know Moose is going to do a bottle crack there. He took the day off so he can do that bottle crack and. Uh, yeah, that's Let's that's what a they got idea. going on. And when you guys go over there, tell them Bourbon Neophyte sent you. And I will see you all there in just a little bit. Let me raise my glass up and say, cheers, everybody. Have a good cheers. night. See you over I'm, there. Good no. night. Cheers. All right. Ciao.